What's going on there, YouTube? Welcome back to another comic book video. Okay, so we are going to do a full story video. A full story video is when I sit down and take a bunch of videos that tell one overarching story and combine them together into one big video. Now, today's full story video is going to be once again about Wolverine. You see, back in the early 1990s, they began to print out two Wolverine books a month, bi-weekly, to kind of get the book out there. But when it came to Larry Hama, he was the current writer at that time. And his main goal was to kind of dive into the history of Wolverine, the origin of Wolverine. Now, most of his books were collected, but some has still not been collected just yet. For example, the whole idea of the character of Silver Fox. You see, back in Chris Claremont's run on Wolverine, he had introduced the character, well, Silver Fox, as the idea of a past lover that was killed off by Sabretooth. But for Larry Hama, he kind of wanted to sit down and dive deeper into the actual character. So he gave us a few stories to kind of help build up the origin of Wolverine, but also give us more information about the character of Silver Fox, but also Weapon X as well. So here is the full story by Larry Hama with Weapon X and Silver Fox. What's going on there, YouTube? Welcome back to another comic book video. Okay, so we are going to continue our coverage over X-Men comics, but it's now time for us to jump over to Wolverine once again, because we're going to cover a three-part story arc that took place in Wolverine number 48, 49, and 50. Now, this three-part story arc is really important because it is actually a sequel to Weapon X, another story arc that came out in the early 1990s. Let me explain. So when it came to Marvel, they realized that fans wanted to know about the history of Wolverine, his origin story. And so over the years, you had Marvel give us just small pieces here and there to kind of say, hey, I know you want more, but here's just one piece for now. And of course, fans just kept coming back wanting to know more about the character. Now, Weapon X gave us a tad bit more pieces than usual, where we kind of learn where he got his adamantium from and the whole idea of the Weapon X project. But then after that story, we got a sequel. This one right here called The Shiva Scenario is a three-part story arc that kind of dives deeper into Weapon X in its own kind of way to build on that story to give us more pieces of the past of Wolverine. For example, we do learn something else about Silver Fox, and that is really important because the only thing we knew by this point in our coverage over Marvel Comics X-Men is that Silver Fox was a lover of Wolverine in the past that had died by the hands of Sabretooth, and that is really it. And so as we dive through this three-part story arc, you're going to see that Marvel was trying to do something really special here for the character Wolverine. And so as we get into the opening pages of this book, we do pick up with Wolverine and Jubilee. Now, this is Wolverine and Jubilee heading over to a what seems to be a nuclear facility, but actually it is not. It is a cover story. Something else went down here. Now, we already know right off the bat that this facility was where the Weapon X project took place where Wolverine became, well, a true weapon. Either way, you have Jubilee and Logan being able to kind of walk around the place. But for Logan, he keeps finding different clues that kind of tells him like, okay, he was here, but he does not remember 
why he was here for or what went down when he was here in the past. Now, Jubilee was able to find a vehicle and his vehicle did belong to Logan, it seemed. But then things get even crazier because you have Logan being able to sit down in this vehicle and he kind of remembers that this vehicle did belong to him. But while he sits inside the vehicle, he begins to have a flashback. Now, if you saw my Weapon X video, you kind of know about the scenery right here, what actually took place at this moment in time. It's the time where Wolverine got out of his car and he was actually beaten down by a group of men who worked for the professor. Now, the name of the professor, I'm going to save for later on in this video. Just know for now that these guys are working for somebody else and they were assigned to bring Wolverine to that person and so after you have Logan being able to fight back at the end of this section or this flashback we do see that Wolverine was pistol whipped so much they were actually able to knock him out and then they took him away. Now, Wolverine is woken up by Jubilee, and really, when she found him, he was on the ground like he was in that flashback. And so, it kind of tells us that these different kind of flashbacks are going to do some work to the mind of Logan. Now, once he's able to get back up, you have Logan being able to go deeper into the actual facility. But while doing that, he sees his reflection in the waters in the facility, except what he sees is his reflection, but when he was part of the Weapon X program, what it seems to be him trying to escape. And this launched another flashback where we see Wolverine in the past trying to escape from the Weapon X program, just going on a rampage, killing anybody who stand in his way. But how he was able to get into the main control room to find the professor, to kill off the professor. And so for Logan, these flashbacks are coming to him left and right. And this is not going to be the last one we are going to see. But you didn't have Jubilee being able to bring Wolverine back into reality, except with her doing that, we see her hand over a gun that she had found in the vehicle that Logan left behind earlier. Now, as soon as she hands over the weapon, well, it starts another flashback. But this time, it seems like Logan is some kind of secret agent. And right now, he's on a mission to take down some terrorists. And matter of fact, this assignment takes takes place in Ontario. Now, while being there, we do see that he has a partner. Now, if you saw my last video when it came to Wolverine, we had learned that Sabretooth was not his father, but apparently his partner. And so, while going through this flashback, we do see Logan kind of seeing Sabretooth in his flashback, but calling him his partner. So now we know in the past, they actually did work together. But once you have the two characters being able to go into a certain room to bring down the terrorists, they are shot down by a bunch of terrorist guns. And it does seem like at first that Logan was out once he was shot three times in the chest. But then something else happens. You see, while you have Logan laying there, we begin to see all these different wires just popping out of him. But then we also see Logan in this flashback overhearing scientists talking about the idea of implanting false memories in his mind. So it could mean that this actual flashback never truly happened. But we don't know that yet. Now, we do learn that Sabretooth and Logan had a third partner, and that would be Mastodon, who does appear to help out our heroes take down this group of terrorists. But things get even crazier. You see, one of the terrorists looks just like Professor we saw earlier in the last flashback when Wolverine was escaping from Weapon X when he killed off that Professor. But then another member of this terrorist group looks just like Silver Fox. Now let's not forget that she was a lover of Logan from his past who died by the hands of Sabretooth. So now the question is right now, what is she doing here being a terrorist, part of this terrorist group? How in the world is she here right now? We already know she died in the past by the hands of Sabretooth. 
on Logan's birthday. But then you have Logan get very upset about the idea that people around him are looking at him as an animal. And for Logan, he hates the idea of people thinking that he's some kind of animal, that he is a man. Now you have Logan being able to come back into reality because at the end of the flashback, he does see this Native American pouch that does belong to Silver Fox. But the catch is that that pouch is in the present day right now with Logan. And so once he sees it in this flashback, he is instantly brought back to the present day, back to reality. Now, once he's back in reality with Jubilee, he said, you know what? I want to leave. Like this place right now is freaking me out. But for Logan, he's still not done wanting to know more about his past. And so now he knows what he has to do. He has to ask for the help of Charles Xavier and Jean Grey, who can most likely help him discover his true origin story. But now we dive into issue number 49. Now, the opening pages of this book, we see that Wolverine had returned back to the mansion of the school of Charles Xavier to ask Charles and Jean Grey for their help to hopefully figure out more about his past. Now, Logan had no idea that apparently they had already begun the process of diving into his mind. And so they tell Wolverine to follow different door paths that could actually lead him to maybe some suppressed memories. And so you have Logan see a doorway and that doorway begin to change him into the moment where he was trying to escape from Weapon X. And we get another chance to see Wolverine going into his berserker mode, going through these guards at that time where he was trying to escape from Weapon X. But he does remember that if he wants to continue to learn more about his past, he has to keep pushing forward. And so he has to find another doorway. Now, he does see a door, but the door is actually labeled with the word Shiva on it. And so for Loki, he's kind of wondering, what could this possibly mean? Now, before he is able to explore more of this door labeled Shiva, well, he did see Sabretooth running past him. Now, this gives us another example of learning more about Sabretooth and Wolverine apparently being partners in the past. And so you have Wolverine follow Sabretooth and the scene changes. It changes to Cuba. Now, we do learn that our two characters are apparently on some kind of mission, but before we are able to learn more about this mission, well, then you have Saber 2 freaking out because he just got word that back in America, they had just assassinated Kennedy and Dallas. And so when you have Wolverine and Saber 2 arrive at a bar to watch the news, they also see that they were able to capture the assassin, to kill off the assassin that killed off Kennedy. Now, for Saber 2, he's really upset by this, but before they're able to talk more about this moment, a bunch of guys with guns appear and they begin to shoot at Sabretooth and Wolverine. Now, you have our two characters trying their best to hold the line in the bar, but you have Sabretooth tell Wolverine to go ahead and get the heck out of here. And so you have Wolverine head for a door, except when he does, the door is actually blocked. And that is when you have Charles Xavier and Jean Grey appear. Now, when they appear, they tell Wolverine that door is basically suppressing a memory, something being locked away from you. Now, for Logan, he wants to know what is inside that door, what is on the other side of that memory there. But the problem is you have Charles say, if you try to break through that barrier, it could be something very dangerous done to you. You might go back into an animal-like state where you're no longer the man you are now but the animal you were in that time when you were escaping from weapon x but for wolverine he wants to know what's behind that door and so he goes ahead and breaks through the barrier but once you have Wolverine go through the door, he's now back in the past again at the point where it was him, Sabretooth, and Macedon going after that group of terrorists in Canada. And remember, the Professor and also Silver Fox was there as well. Now, the Professor is dead, 
but Silver Fox is alive. Now for Logan, he's kind of questioning this moment in time. And so he asks Sabretooth and Mastodon to leave so that he is able to have some alone time with Silver Fox to kind of understand what really went down at this moment in time. And so when he does begin to ask her questions, she does agree that she knows them. She does agree that they were a couple. She does agree they've been together for a very long time and she remembers all their happiest moments. But this Silver Fox is not the one that Logan truly remembers because this one is going for a weapon, a weapon to use against him, a weapon to shoot him with his own weapon. Now he is able to defend himself, but didn't he realize that this has to be a fake moment in time, a fake memory, because when he looks down, he sees a calendar and one of the pictures in the calendar, he sees their cabin. And so he knows this cannot be real. He knows that this memory was actually planted in his mind. And so you have Logan go ahead and slash the walls open. And he sees this universe in front of him. Now, for Logan, he wants to explore this universe. But the problem is, the scene begins to change again. Where you have Silver Fox now be kind of absorbed into a tree. But then we see Logan back in his Weapon X gear again. And it seems like now, he's going through some kind of field test. When he was part of Weapon X Project. And now he does see a bear. And he does go out after the bear he cuts the bad hair off but once he does that well the bear head turns into his head and when he turns around he sees himself now before he's able to kind of figure out what exactly is going down here he then sees a bunch of guards who work for the next coming for him trying to bring him down and he's trying his best to survive now at this point of the whole idea of charles and jean gray trying to help logan discover his past they realize that this point they have to pull him out because if they don't again he might go into that animal state and so you have gene and charles pull him out of the whole process the whole pro mind program but once he does wake up he realized that he had destroyed the entire medical bay at charles xavier school now the only reason why that happened because again like Charles told him, if you try to go past this oppressed memory that's blocked away from you, you might go back into an animal state. And so in the real world, Homeboy went into an animal state. He was going crazy. Now, Charles wanted to continue on, but Jean Grey said, no, we should stop. And so they did. Now, for Logan, he still wants to know more. Now, for Charles, he does have concerns now because he's like, hey, if you try to discover more about your past like this, you are going to change back into an animal. But Wolverine says, I am not an animal. I am a man. And that's really important for the character of Logan. But you didn't have Logan leave. He gets on a mansion and he just heads somewhere. He leaves. Now, as he does leave, he does pass by a character that we have not seen since the Weapon X story arc. And that would be Carol Hines. Now, Carol Hines had actually helped out with the Weapon X program, but apparently she was assigned to watch Wolverine to see where he goes. And so as he drove past her, she calls over to the professor and she is worried about Wolverine finding out everything. But you have the professor say, don't worry, because Project Shiva is going to handle everything, most likely going to kill off Wolverine. Now, as we dive into the final chapter for today's video, we do get some funny moments in the opening pages for this chapter, Wolverine issue number 50. So when it comes to Wolverine, he had learned from Forge where S.H.I.E.L.D. goes to get the helicarrier refueled. Apparently, they go to City Corp, a tall building in Manhattan. Now, Wolverine knows that when it comes to S.H.I.E.L.D., they're going to expect him to take the freight elevator because this man rode his motorcycle into the actual building and riding up different floors to get 
get to the freight elevator. Now he knew that S.H.I.E.L.D. knew that he would take the freight elevator. So he got off on a different floor and took the staircase the rest of the way up. And so while you had a S.H.I.E.L.D. agents waiting for Wolverine to pop out the elevator, Homeboy came up the staircase on the side and surprised all the agents just to get to Nick Fury. And the reason why, because Nick and him have to have a small conversation about something very important about his past. You see, Wolverine realized that Nick Fury has a line to call up the director of Central Intelligence. It's Wolverine saying, you're going to call him and you're going to tell him, I want to know almost everything about my past. That I know you guys have files on me and I want those files. And if you try not to help me, just know that I will tell the world what happened back in Cuba. Now, let's not forget, in the earlier chapter, we saw a flashback of Wolverine and Sabretooth in Cuba. And so it's him saying, I will tell the world what went down on that particular mission. And so because of that, you have Nick go ahead and call up the director of Central Intelligence. But while you have Nick Fury working on that request for Wolverine, we do learn that at a secret base of Hydra, they have these hackers who are connected to the NSA computers. So anytime somebody goes for a certain kind of file that would automatically get flagged, they also find out as well. And so when it comes to these hackers, they realize that Nick Fury tried to access a certain file. And that file is all about Logan. And so you have one of the hackers go tell their leader of this Hydra base. Now, this leader is kind of wondering what is actually going on when it comes to Wolverine. But apparently, this person has close connections to Logan. And so she tells her hackers, go away and I will handle this kind of situation. Now, with the information that Wolverine had gathered from Nick Fury, he heads over to Washington, D.C. And the reason why? Because the professor from his past is apparently working at the Department of Agriculture. And so for Wolverine, he heads over there to see if he can have a conversation with the professor. But the problem is the front death lady tells Wolverine that he may not see him at all. And so she tells him to go away. Now for Logan, he's like, fine, you know what? I'll leave, but I'm going to get the guy in a more legal kind of way. But as Logan leaves, we do learn that inside the office, Carol's in there, but Carol is also with the professor. Now his real name is like Truett Hudson. But either way, you do have the professor tell Carol they have to go over to a certain place to make sure that Project Shiva does finish the job. Of course, talking about killing off Logan. But getting back over to Wolverine, you have Wolverine heading over to Canada, to Winesor, to find the warehouse that belonged to Weapon X. Now, we do learn that the NSA did hand over a lot of files to Wolverine. So many files that he honestly can't go through them all at this exact moment. And so, on his way over to Winesor, he brought Jean Grey, Jubilee, Cyclops, and Charles Xavier. Now, while he goes inside the warehouse, he wants his friends to look through the rest of the information that he had gathered from Nick Fury. Now, he does tell us that the Weapon X program was being funded by the CIA through some kind of special agreement with Canada, but the real information is inside that warehouse in Winesor. But he also remembered a certain time in that warehouse alongside with Sabretooth and Silver Fox as well. But either way, you have his team stay behind the Blackbird to go through that information and he goes inside the warehouse hoping to find more. Now while he goes inside, while well, we see the Professor and Carol are also there and they see Logan going inside. Now those two characters, they have no idea that they're being watched by Hydra. So things are about to pop off very soon. So you have Logan go inside this warehouse where he does see all these different kinds of 
TV sets, like different kind of sets made for TV shows or movies. For example, the first one he finds looks very familiar to that flashback where him and Sabretooth were partners and they were going after a group of terrorists. And we saw in that flashback that Super Fox was also a terrorist as well. And now you realize that flashback was basically fake. He goes into the next one and he remembers this set very well because it was the night that Sabretooth had killed off Silver Fox. And him and Sabretooth fought in that bar in that flashback as well. And that took place back in Wolverine issue number 10. And so for Logan, he begins to realize that maybe some of his memories are not actually real, that they were implanted into his mind. Now he does walk around to other TV sets, but he realized that these sets never took place in his life, which means they belong to other people most likely, which means there are other subjects besides Wolverine in this Weapon X program. But while you have Logan going through the warehouse, back on the Blackbird, you have the rest of the X-Men going through the different files that Logan gathered from Nick Fury. Now, we do get a funny moment where you have Jubilee getting very upset that she's stuck on the Blackbird, that she's not down with Logan going through the warehouse, and you have Cyclops tell her, just get over it and get to work. But getting back into the actual warehouse, we see the professor and Carol go into an abandoned control room as a way to monitor Logan to see what he is going to do. Now, you have Logan being able to walk into a trap, but being able to easily escape the trap. But after doing that, you have Logan begin to go deeper and deeper into the warehouse until he finds the door, the same door he saw back in the last chapter when you had Charles Jean Grey helping him out. And again, he sees that label. It says Shiva on the door. Now for Logan, he remembers that there was a Native American pouch that was found in his old car. And so he pulls out the pouch. Inside of it is a key. And that key is of course going to be used as a way to open up the door. And so when he does open up the door, and that is when he meets Shiva. The Destroyer. Now, at first, it does look like, okay, we are about to get one heck of a battle here because look at Shiva. It looks amazing, this super powerful robot. But then by the next page, you have Logan being able to just go ahead and destroy it completely, just like that. But then, as you have Logan walking away, we jump back over to Carol and Professor, and you have the Professor tell Carol, don't worry, this is only a temporary setback, because Shiva is not done just yet. But before we are able to learn more about Shiva, we jump back over to Cyclops for a brief moment. And here is the reason why. You see, Cyclops found a file in all that data that had a list of names of people who were also part of the Weapon X program alongside with Wolverine. But here's the catch though. You see, those people are most likely are going to be attacked next after Logan is supposedly taken care of. Now, getting back over to Logan, he's then confronted by Shiva. Now, Shiva is not the actual android. It's a program behind that door that is able to keep making more and more robots to go after its different targets. But here's the thing, when one robot loses to a certain target, the new one comes in and be able to adapt to the last one's mistakes. So for example, Wolverine took out one robot, but the new robot now knows what moves to make against Logan to make sure it does not fail against Logan. And so for Wolverine, he believes the same moves used last time should be able to take the new version of Shiva down. But now I realize those old moves are not going to work. He needs to find a different way to actually win this battle now. But let's not forget that Hydra is there as well. So while you have Logan fighting against Shiva, while you have Carol and the Professor watching Logan fight against Shiva, you have that Hydra boss walk into the control room right behind them. And when you have Carol and the Professor turn around to see who is this Hydra boss, we learn it's actually Silver Fox. So now she's here. We're getting our first 
full appearance of this character. And so while you have Wolverine and Shiva fighting against each other, they're going through all these different kinds of sets. Now, they do land on a prom set, and this is really important, guys, because you have Silver Fox, the Professor, and also Carol watching this battle. And when they do see Wolverine and Shiva arrive at that prom set, Silver Fox, she remembers that set because she remembers a time where she had went to prom with Logan, but she also remembered that he got being up on because he brought a Native American girl. Now, the question is, was that actually a real moment in time? Or possibly, was it also faked like Logan's flashbacks from earlier? And so you have Logan being able to finally get the upper hand on Shiva. But while doing that, you have the professor try to take down Silver Fox except she is able to unload a whole clip into his body, leaving us to believe that she had just killed off the professor. But back on the Blackbird, you have Cyclops realize that the list he found earlier is technically a hit list, meaning that the first person on the list is going to be killed off. And so they realize that first name is Logan. And so they rush down into the warehouse to help him. But by the time they get down there, Logan was able to get rid of Shiva. Now, technically, even though he did defeat this Shiva, that program was going to create another one. Except, luckily for Logan, the program does not make another one. And here is the reason why. Because you have our heroes hit a scream of a woman and they go into that control room where they find Carol. Now apparently when Carol woke up after being knocked out by Fox, she realized that the professor had died. But before he had died, he had did something to Shiva where now Wolverine is no longer the main target for Shiva. Instead, it went on to the next person on that list. And the next person is Sabretooth. And really, the book kind of ends on that note right there. Even though you have the rest of the X-Men telling Logan that they should be somewhat concerned for the other people on that list after Sabretooth, for Logan, he does not care. And he moves on. And so now we get another piece of Logan's path. But guys, it only gets worse from here. What's going on there, YouTube? Welcome back to another comic book video. Okay, so we're going to continue our coverage over X-Men comics, but now it's time for us to dive into some more Wolverine comics. Now, we're going to cover another three-part story arc that takes place right after issue number 50. So, 51, 52, and 53. Now, this three-part story arc is really more about the idea of Wolverine saving the timeline. Yeah, you heard that right. Really, he's kind of saving the entire universe. And you see what I mean as we go through today's video. Now, like I said a moment ago, this video does pick up where our last one left off at. Now, at the end of our last video, we had learned that, well, Logan has some things that were locked away in his mind. They were suppressed. And so for Wolverine, he wanted to unlock those memories. And so thanks to Charles Xavier, Jean Grey, and some other things going on in our last video, Logan was able to remember some of those things. But before he was able to unlock those memories, Charles told him, if you try to unlock your past, most likely you might turn more into an animal rather than a man. Now for Wolverine, he hated that idea. But at the same time, he wanted to remember his past. And so he went ahead and unlocked those past 
memories. But unfortunately, he's now acting more like an animal rather than a man. And so you have Wolverine in the danger room. And the reason why, because they want to see how far he can go when he's out in the field before he has to go in his berserker rage. And everyone knows that if Wolverine does enter his berserker rage, then most likely you're also in danger if you are his teammate because he does not care if you're good or bad. He's killing everybody in front of him. And so they want to see how far he can go before being pushed into his berserker rage. Now, for some of the X-Men, the test you have Charles doing on Wolverine is truly messed up. And let me explain, because when it comes to the Danger Room, it is being used as a way to test out the different members of the X-Men, but to also get them battle ready. But the test right now for Logan is at the top level. And for Logan, he's just going through it like it's nothing. But for Charles, he wants to continue to push Logan farther and farther to see how far he can go before he goes into a berserker rage. And so for Cyclops, Storm, and Jubilee, it's not right because they're treating Wolverine like an animal. But the problem is, Wolverine is acting like an animal. Now, they do put Logan through a virtual reality to fight against a set of characters. Now, at first, it's just random two characters, but then the thing gets more intense when you throw in Sabretooth and Lady Deathstrike into the test as well. But again, it's still Logan showing that he's more animal, more savage than he used to be. And you have Jubilee realize that the Logan she met a while back is no longer around. And for Charles, he says, you know what? I believe when you had Logan unlock those things from his past, he began to show his true original nature, a man who's more like an animal rather than a true man. Now, something else I do want to point out that Logan is more cold towards other people, especially towards Jubilee. Now, that's really strange because, as we all know, in the earlier parts of our coverage over the X-Men, Jubilee and Logan were very close. Like, she had a close bond to Logan, and she hates the idea of seeing him like this, but also she wants to make sure that he is well protected. And so, when she goes over to ask him where he's going, he's kind of like, hey, I'm going to a bar, I want to be left alone, and I want you to stay away from me. And he leaves. And so it kind of shows that Logan is really cold towards other people now. It's completely different. Now, as soon as Wolverine is able to arrive at the bar, he's then confronted by a young blonde woman. Now, at first, I believed that this young blonde woman might be from Logan's past, like someone he actually knew from his past and they were very close because she was able to easily get up to him, talk to him, touch him. And matter of fact, she asked, don't you want to go back to my motel? And he agrees automatically. They leave just like that. But now for Jubilee, she's so worried about Logan that she actually leaves the mansion to go find Logan at the bar. The problem is, though, when she does get to the bar, she can't find Logan. Matter of fact, his bike is not there anymore. Now, when she does look across the street, she does see his bike, but at the motel. And she kind of realized that he must have gotten a room for some reason. Now, when she does go over to the motel, well, she does see somebody she actually knows very well, and that would be Jean Grey. And we see Jean Grey walking into the motel that Logan is at. Now, we learn very quickly that this is not Jean Grey at all. That matter of fact, this is Mystique changing forms into Jean Grey, but also she was that blonde woman from earlier that was able to get close to Logan. Now, at first, you may believe that this is Mystique and Wolverine having some kind of secret meeting, that they're secret lovers. But in reality, it is Mystique coming to Logan and asking Logan for help because somebody who's been chasing her needs to be stopped. And we're kind of left to wonder who Mystique is actually talking about. Now, there are some characters we have to talk about. So, for example, 
Albert LCD and also Hunter in the Darkness. Now, I want to focus first on Albert and LCD because they were two cyborgs that were actually created by Donald Pierce. Now, remember, Donald Pierce is a cyborg himself, but he's also a leader of the Reavers, a group of cyborgs. Now, their main goal was to get rid of the mutant race, but the last few story arcs that had included those characters, their main goal was to get rid of Wolverine and so when it comes to Albert he is a cyborg Wolverine that Donald was trying to use as a way to get rid of Logan and the same goes for LCD except LCD is a small girl cyborg that he could use to trick Logan because she was made to be a bomb now we talked about these characters in the earlier part of our coverage over Wolverine but really, by this point in our coverage, these two characters are actually close friends of Logan now, are close allies. Now, in our last couple of videos, LCD had lost her body, so you had Albert being able to create a new body for her to actually use, while hiding out in the tunnels of the Morlocks. Now, let's shift our focus over to the Hunter in the Darkness. Now, the Hunter in the Darkness is not really important for today's story arc. He's just around. Just know that the Hunter in the Darkness is a creature from Canada that Logan had fought against as soon as he escaped from Weapon X. There was another time, but that's not really important. But just know that these three characters are going to be around for the sake of this story arc. But getting back over to Jubilee, you have Jubilee head back over to the X Mansion, except when she does, she comes to find out that, well, Jean Grey is at home, which means the Jean Grey she saw earlier was not the real Jean Grey. But then we jump back over to Logan, right? And you have Logan tell us, or really he has Mystique, to tell us who is actually coming after her. And then out of nowhere, you have Spiral appear. And this means we're going to have another Mojo story arc. Now, I kind of want to sit down and actually talk about Spiral for a tad bit because she is a very cool character, but at the same time, her origin is somewhat complicated, but not really. Let me explain. So for Spiral, she was actually a normal young woman, a stunts woman to be more exact, but she fell in love with a certain character, and that character would be Longshot. Now, Longshot, he came from Mojoverse, and here's the thing though, the Mojoverse is just a pocket dimension. But the thing was, Longshot wanted to go back home. And because she was such in love with him, she followed him into this other dimension, the Mojoverse. Except when they had arrived, well, they were captured by Mojo. And Longshot had his mind wiped to forget about her. But for Spyro, well, she began to be tortured by Mojo and another character known as Arise. Now, Arise worked for Mojo, but he was actually able to do some modifications on Spyro to make her somewhat better in the eye of Mojo and she became a slave for Mojo. Now with that being said after becoming a slave for Mojo, Mojo realized that he had to make sure that she'll become an actual slave for him no matter what. So what he did was he sent her back in time to make sure her past self would go through the same events so that she'll become a slave for Mojo back in the present day. And so technically right now, I guess you can say that this spiral is actually from the future. Either way, the reason why she is here is because you see, for Spyro, she was tortured for so long that she's able to look into other dimensions that are technically used as a way to time travel. Now, the reason why she is here because she realized that this motel room is actually an intersection of five different streams of time. Now, before she's able to explain more of that, she does tell us it's called a cardinal locus. But again, before she's able to tell us what the heck is going on, a being beam of light does shoot out of a regular picture. Now, this beam of light is apparently billions of tomorrows. Basically, future tomorrows coming down the road for different timelines. But either way, before you have Spiral being able to say 
what the heck is going on our heroes are then attacked by a plasma wraith now a plasma wraith is going to be somewhat important for this video but either way you do have mystique wolverine and also spiral being able to work together to get rid of the plasma wraith and you have spiral say you know what let me go ahead and sit down explain everything to you wolverine mystique about what the heck is truly going on here now, before we are able to learn what the heck is going on, we see that Albert LCD and Hunter in the Darkness are flying over the same motel that Wolverine, Spiral, and Mystique are in. But they have no idea their old friend Wolverine is actually in there. We also see that Jubilee had just arrived back in that location right near the motel. Now I'm going to try my best to explain what the heck is going on here in this story arc. So if you do end up being confused, I'm sorry. I'm trying my best. But at the same time, I'm also confused a tad bit. But you have Spiral basically tell us that there is a traffic jam in the time and space of the universe. Let me explain. So apparently future and past versions of herself and other time travelers like Gateway, they're all converging into one singular area something called the crunch now usually the crunch is at the end of the time basically the universe will collapse on itself and everything ends across the board but the reason why everything's happening right now because different time streams are collapsing on one another so future versions of spyro and past versions of her are all hitting the same area at the same exact time the same goes for gateway and it seems like all time and space is just heading towards the crunch the end of all time for the universe the end of the universe but while you have Spiral trying her best to explain everything to us, well then out of nowhere, another beam of light shoots out of the TV this time. Now we are told that this beam of light came from the future, that something in the future is trying to send a message or possibly stop her in the past. Now for Mystique and Wolverine, they kind of believe that, okay, I'm guessing we're going to go in the future to save all time. But you have Spiral say, no, we're not technically going into the future we're going somewhere else in time but with that being said out of nowhere you do have you have a vortex appear out of nowhere now this vortex is just sucking in everything in the room but it's going to take our heroes over to the area that Spyro was talking about now outside the actual motel you have jubilee see the vortex and she's also getting sucked in as well but luckily she was able to hold on to something to say her life before she got sucked into the vortex except when you have the vortex go away she realized that mystique wolverine and also spyro they're all gone but everything else in that room is also gone as well and so for jubilee she's kind of wondering where in the world did everyone go to Except when Jubilee goes inside the motel to look around, she hears voices coming from the closet. Except when she does open up the closet door, well then she's confronted by no other than Mojo. So like I said earlier, this is going to be a Mojo story. If you have anybody like Spyro or Longshot coming from the Mojo verse, you already know it's going to be a Mojo story. But getting back over to our heroes, we do see that our heroes had traveled through a time vortex. Now, this time vortex was actually able to take our heroes to the end of time. And currently, they arrive on top of the giant world machine. Now, when they do arrive, you have Mystique, and really just Mystique only, having so many questions about what in the world is going on. Now, for Logan, he honestly cannot be bothered at all. But either way, you you do now have our three characters at the end of time, but then they're confronted by another plasma wraith. Now this plasma wraith is actually more powerful than the last one. And the only reason why, because it's in its own element, its own kind of area, the end of time. Now this plasma wraith, it's really hard for our heroes to bring it down, but it's also saying different kind of lines from different kinds of movies. But you do have our heroes trying their best to defeat this actual plasma wraith. 
But Mystique realized what's happening here at this moment. And so she's able to use her ability to change into Mojo to distract the actual Wraith for a moment to allow Wolverine and Spyro to kill it off. Now, after it dies, you have Spyro, Wolverine, and Mystique realize that all of this is being done by Mojo. Because when it comes to Mojo, he's really big on entertainment. Let me explain. So for Mojo, he comes from Mojo World, and Mojo Worlds and Mojo Verse, a pocket dimension. Now, when it comes to Mojo, like I said earlier, he's really big on movies, really big on entertainment in his reality, in his dimension. And so he goes out of his way to do all these different kind of things to bring in all different kinds of entertainment for his pocket dimension. And so for Mystique, it seems like all of this is being done by Mojo as a way to get more entertainment for his reality, to get those numbers up for the ratings. And so you now have Mystique, Spyro, and Wolverine agreeing to work together to put the end to this. Now, the only way to make sure everything's going to end up okay is to go inside the Citadel, the Citadel of the end of time, the great world machine that Wolverine, Mystique, and Spyro are currently standing on. And so they go inside. But getting back over to the present day, we do pick up with Jubilee. Now for Jubilee, she's confronted by Mojo, who's looking for Spyro. But Jubilee really has no idea what the heck is going on. And so she's trying to leave. Now Mojo is trying his best not to allow her to leave. And so he does call in one of his slaves to actually help him to capture Jubilee. But then out of nowhere for Mojo, he kind of realized where Spyro could most likely be yet at the crunch at the end of time and so you have mojo being able to open up a time vortex to take him jubilee and his other slave over to the crunch but now we have to jump back over to albert lcd and hunter in the darkness and you have these three characters traveling over to the old weapon x facility except when they had arrived they found an old native burial bound of bones and so you had our heroes get out of their jet to go see what's going on with this actual area now for the hunter in the darkness he wants to dig at the actual mound and so you had albert help out except after a while of digging well they find a hand sticking out of the ground. Here's the crazy part though. This hand is covered in adamantium. There are claws popping out of the hand. And so for Albert and LCD, they're kind of wondering, is there a possibility they just found Wolverine or somebody else that's very similar to Wolverine? And so as we dive into the final chapter for today's video, we pick back up with Mystique, Wolverine, and also Spyro. Now, our three characters are about to go inside the actual Citadel to hopefully find Mojo to actually stop him. Now, we also learn that something very important here. You see, if the crunch does not happen, then that means the Big Bang at the very beginning of the universe cannot happen either. You need an end to have a beginning and so with that being said if our heroes are not able to stop mojo but to also make sure the crunch does happen at the end of time then hey all time is going to be destroyed and so you have our heroes head inside the actual citadel now, once our heroes do get inside the actual Citadel, they do find a huge plasma screen. And of course, you have Mojo face appear. And this is Mojo kind of reestablishing the whole idea that he's doing all of this as a way to kind of, you know, get some entertainment to get the ratings up for all his shows back in his reality and so you have our three heroes trying their best to figure out how they're going to stop mojo now that is when you have mojo release another plasma wrath or wraith sorry to go after our heroes but he also shows our heroes that he has jubilee as his prisoner but getting back over to Albert and LCD, they were able to investigate the bones they found earlier. Now for Albert, he was able to find out the bones do belong to Wolverine. But here's the problem though. We already know that Wolverine is alive and currently in the future. But on top of that, these bones are 200 years old. And the question is right now, how is that even possible? 
But getting back over to the future, you do have Wolverine, Mystique, and also Spyro trying their best to fight against all the different weights. Now, you also have Jubilee there as well, but she's being held by Mojo. Now, you do have our heroes learn that the reason why the crunch cannot happen is because, well, Mojo has taken away all the antimatter. Without the antimatter, the crunch cannot happen like it's supposed to happen, which means the crunch can happen happen the big bang cannot happen at the very beginning of time or the very beginning of the universe either way though with Husa mojo he tells jubilee if you agree to become my slave i'll end all of this matter of fact i'll let your good old friend wolverine actually survive and so we're kind of left to wonder is jubilee actually going to take up on his offer now we do learn that Gateway is trying to project himself into the future to kind of tell Wolverine, Mystique, and also Spyro a very important message on how they can save the entire universe. They need an antimatter missile. And luckily for them, there are two people who are currently holding on to one, and that would be Albert and LCD. They have a missile. And so you have Wolverine say, okay, you know what? Spyro Mystique. You guys go back in time to get that missile and bring that missile over into the future. I'll try my best to hold off Mojo and his forces to give you guys enough time to get the missile and bring it back here. And so just like that, the plan goes in motion. Mystique and Spyro, they go back in time. Wolverine is now on his own. But the question is, what about Jubilee? Because currently, she's still being held as a hostage by Mojo. Now for Mojo, he's trying his best to convince Jubilee to go ahead and say yes by showing her who is the other slave that he used earlier to help him catch her Jubilee. And apparently this slave is just a future version of Jubilee. And he's saying, look, that is your future. You are going to agree. There's no way that you are going to break this agreement. You are going to agree and become my slave. So go ahead and say yes, and I'll save your boy Wolverine right now at this moment. Getting back over to the past, you do have Spyro and Mystique being able to find LCD and also Albert. Now you do have our lady say, hey, we need to borrow your missile to save the future. So go ahead and hand it over. But for LCD, she cannot believe that they need the missile to save the future, to save Wolverine who's trapped in the future. Especially Wolverine because they found a skeleton of Wolverine and they believe that he's currently dead. But you have Spiral say, listen, we don't have time for this because the longer we're in the past, the more we forget about the future. And right now, we need to remember everything about the future to hopefully save it. But on top of that, the bones you found is Logan, but Logan from a different timeline. So with that information, are you guys going to help us? And you have LCD and Albert agree to hand over the antimatter missile. Now the ending of the story does wrap up very quickly here where basically we do learn that the slave we saw earlier is a future version of Jubilee, but not the Jubilee from our reality. This is a different Jubilee from a different reality who did agree to become a slave for Mojo. But getting back to the main point, you do have Mystique and also Spiral being able to send the missile over to Wolverine. And he is able to use the missile as a way to stop the crunch, sorry, to let the crunch to actually happen. And with the crunch happening, that means the Big Bang can happen. With the Big Bang happening, that means everything should go back to normal when it comes the timeline of the main Marvel Universe. With everything being solved, you didn't have all our heroes be sent back to the past. Now, they're not sent back to the point where everything had begun. So, for example, you have Wolverine right now playing poker with some members of the X-Men, but also some members of the Fantastic Four at the Baxter Building. Now, Jubilee, she had apparently arrived in Tokyo with Wolverine's motorcycle, and she actually calls up Logan saying, hey, I need your help. I got arrested in Tokyo for one being underage for, you know, driving a vehicle, but also because Wolverine's motorcycle does not have import duty stamp because, well, it's in Tokyo, not in the U.S. But either way, Logan now has to go to Tokyo to go get Jubilee and his bike back over to America. But this is where we are going to end today's
What's going on there, YouTube? Welcome back to another comic book video. Okay, so we're going to continue our coverage over the X-Men, but now it's time for us to dive into some more Wolverine comics. And now we pick up with Wolverine issue number 54. This is a one shot where you have Wolverine going up against Shatterstar, a new character around his time in Marvel Comics, who had just recently joined X-Force. And the question is right now, who would win that battle, Wolverine or Shatterstar? And this book right here really does answer that question for us. So let's go ahead and dive into today's video. And so getting into the opening pages for today's video, we actually pick up in South Bronx, New York, where we actually pick up with a Morlock. Now remember, a Morlock is a mutant who, unfortunately, when they had gained their mutant ability, well, their body had completely changed, where they're no longer able to hide in the public the fact that they are a mutant. It's kind of easy to tell that they are a mutant. And so you have most of the Morlocks just living in the sewers of New York. But with that being said, we do pick up with a particular Morlock who's just trying to get away. And apparently he's trying his best to get away from people who love the idea of hunting down other people. Key word there, other people. Not mutants, just other people in New York. For them, it's kind of like a sport. But for mutants, kind of like the number one thing on their list to hunt. Either way, you do have these group of people being able to find the Morlock and actually kill him off. But now we have to jump over to Shatterstar. Now, like I said earlier, Shatterstar was a member of X-Force around his time in Marvel Comics. But when it comes to Shatterstar, though, he's not from Earth. He's actually from a different dimension called the Mojoverse. Now, the Mojoverse is being ruled by a character known as Mojo. And when it comes to Mojo, he's really big on entertainment, television entertainment. You see, everybody in his dimension, they watch his TV shows. And so he has to make sure that his TV shows are actually good. They get good ratings. Now for Shatterstar, most of the shows he watched back in his reality were just gladiator fights where you had two great warriors fighting in the middle of the ring to the death. And so for him, once he hears about the idea that there is a group of people out there going out of their way to hunt down other people, he kind of finds that somewhat intriguing because he's been on Earth for a while and he thought he knew everything about the Earth. But now he's hearing about the idea that there are people out there who are hunting down other people, and that's kind of wild and crazy. He finds that very intriguing. And so he says, you know what? Let me go ahead and leave the base of X-Force to go out of my way to find this group of people. But now we jump over to Wolverine and Rogue, and we see those two characters in the danger room. Now, technically, this is a callback to an earlier story arc where you had Rogue and Magneto actually work together to save the Savage Land. And let me explain. So when it comes to Rogue and Wolverine in their danger room training session, in the middle of the actual session, Rogue does freeze up, and the reason why, she sees Magneto. And back in that earlier story arc, we had established that Magneto actually had feelings for Rogue, and Rogue had feelings for Magneto. And so sometimes, when she sees him, she does not act the way she's supposed to be. Either way, in the middle of the session, Wolverine had to save her butt. Now, after doing that, you have Logan and Rogue find out that apparently there is a group of people out there hunting down other people, especially mutants. And for Wolverine, that is not okay at all. And so he leaves the mansion to go find this group. Now, it does not take us long to actually see Logan going up against Shatterstar because while you have Logan out there trying his best to find that group of people who are going around hunting down other people, he runs into Shatterstar. Now, Shatterstar, he believes that Wolverine is actually part of that group. And really, the same goes for Logan. He believes that Shatterstar is also a member of that group. Either way, you do have the two characters begin to fight 
fight against each other. Now, the battle does actually end with Wolverine winning very easily. Now, for Wolverine, he's kind of like, who the heck are you? But then he realized that this is Shatterstar. He heard about this character through Cable. And Shatterstar, well, he had heard so many great stories about Logan from his reality. And so for him, he's all like, oh my God, I'm meeting a great warrior, the great Wolverine, Lord Wolverine. Either way, you do have Logan ask, why in the world are you here for? And so you have Shatterstar say, oh, the reason why I'm here is because technically, back in my reality, this is kind of like a sport. And so I kind of wanted to join in and see how fun it would be. But for Logan, he says, this is not a game. You can't do this for fun. This is really messed up. You know what? Come with me and let me show you why the whole idea of hunting down other people is not okay at all. But now we pick up with another Morlock. Now this is a Morlock who's just minding their business, just walking around the area. But unfortunately, this Morlock is then confronted by that same group we saw earlier that had killed other mutants in this area. Either way, this group is trying to go after this Morlock. But luckily for the Morlock, well, Wolverine and Shatterstar were nearby. And so they tried their best to actually protect this young Morlock. Now for Wolverine and Shatterstar, they kind of want to know what is the big idea of hunting down mutants? Why not other people? Now we do learn for this group, he's kind of like, or the group leader, sorry. But he's like, well, you know, we would hunt down other people like blacks, whites, gays, lesbians, and the list goes on. But mutants, well, they just sound right because when we do record all of this, the sound bite sounds so much better when we're killing off a mutant. Now for Shatterstar, he kind of realized that there's no honor in them going after other people. This is no kind of sport. They're doing this just for the heck of it. And so for him, he's also ticked off about the idea that innocent people are being killed off for just some kind of game. And so you do have our heroes go out of their way to attack this group. Now for Shadowstar, he wants to kill this group off because now he knows that they're just going out of their way to kill off innocent people just for the heck of it. And for him, that's not okay at all. They have to die. But for Wolverine, he's all like, no, we don't kill these people, even though Wolverine would, but he's all like, no, we're not going to kill them off. Instead, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and destroy all their different camera footage. But on top of that, we're going to hand them over to the police. And so once you have our two heroes being able to take them down, you then have Logan go ahead and call up the police. Now, the last page for me personally is kind of like a shot towards media because you have Wolverine and Shatterstar watching the police take those guys away to prison. But on the way over to the police van, you have all these different news cameras just taking their photos. And so for Logan and Shatterstar, well, really Shatterstar, he says, this is kind of weird. Like your world media is weird because these people are getting what they want. They kill off innocent people and now look, they're going to be on live television. Even though they're going to be hated on, they still got what they wanted. Now for Wolverine, he says, listen, I don't watch much television, but I can tell you one thing though. I feel like TV is a way for people to escape from their own personal lies. People who are too afraid to probably their own lies worth something and so then you have logan just walk away and you have shadowstar kind of think about what logan just said but that does What's going on there, YouTube? Welcome back to another comic book video. Okay, so we're going to continue our coverage over the X-Men, but now it's time for us to pick back up again with some more Wolverine comics. But now I'm gonna cover another three-part story arc that's technically continuing a story that took place a couple videos ago. You see, two videos ago, we actually did a story where you had Wolverine and a few other characters being able 
able to save the entire universe by going into the future. It was one heck of a storyline. But at the end of that storyline, our heroes came back to the present day. The problem was Jubilee had arrived in Tokyo, not back in America. And because she had Wolverine's motorcycle, they said, hey, listen, um, you're underage to drive that. And also, um, that vehicle does not have any import taxes paid. So with all that being said, you're being arrested. And so she had to call up Wolverine and come and get her out of Tokyo, Japan. And so now you have Wolverine and Gambit heading over there to save the young woman. Except they do have a small problem when it comes to them trying to get through the airport security. You see, when it comes to Wolverine, well, unfortunately, his bones are covered in metal, adamantium. So when he walks through a metal detector, they're like, hey, you can't go on that plane at all because we have no idea if you're holding any kind of weapons. Now, for Wolverine at first, he does try his best to hide the idea that, well, he does have weapons inside of him but they're like hey listen you still can't go on there even if you're saying you have some kind of surgery done on you to have your bones covered in metal and so you have wolverine show the claws and that was the final straw they're like hey you definitely can't go now and so you have gambit tell wolverine you better call up nick fury to see if we have a way to get over there through him rather than going through the usual airport but now we have to jump over to one of the mini bad guys for today's video. Now, I'm not going to reveal who this character is. I'll tell you down the road later on in this video. But just know that she is another cyborg that was created by a character known as Donald Pierce. Now remember, Donald Pierce himself was a cyborg. He led a group called the Reavers, and they were all cyborgs. And their main goal was to, well, go after Wolverine and the X-Men and really all mutants across the board but the number one goal was well Wolverine with all that being said they kept failing over and over again and Donald Pierce tried so many different things to hopefully kill off Wolverine but all that being said he did create a cyborg before trying to go after Wolverine this cyborg right here and I'll tell you more about her later on in this video but just know that she's going through a very interesting process to make sure that she also goes over over to Tokyo so that she's able to hunt down Wolverine. But now we can jump over to Jubilee. But like I said earlier, Jubilee's in Tokyo. She has been arrested. She's waiting for Wolverine and Gambit to come get her. Now, while in her prison cell, she's also locked up with other prisoners who are trying to be a little rough with her, but she's able to use her powers against them. But after doing that, we do learn that one of the girls in that prison cell is actually a member of the Hand. And so now the hand is also going to get involved in this crazy three-part story arc. But now we jump back over to Wolverine and Gambit arriving in Japan. Now, when they do arrive, their main goal is to just go to police department, get Jubilee, and get the heck out of there. But the problem is, though, you do have a taxi driver promise to take our heroes over to the police department, except he does not. Instead, he takes them over to a nearby car wash. And the reason why? Because he's working for the hand. And you didn't have a few members of the hand trying their best to kill off Wolverine and Gambit. Now, you do have our heroes being able to easily take these guys out. But now the question is, why is the hand coming after Wolverine 4? But then we learn that one of the many leaders of the hand is actually in Tokyo right now, and that would be Masuo. Now remember, Masuo is just one of the many leaders of the hand because the hand has so many different factions out there in the world of Marvel Comics. But when it comes to Masuo, he is responsible for what happened to Psylocke, the idea that he put her mind into an Asian woman's body. Also, when it comes to Masuo, it does seem like he He's making a deal with someone who's very close to Wolverine, and that would be Mariko. Now remember, Mariko is a lover of Wolverine, but unfortunately, they cannot be together, and here is the reason why. 
You see, when it comes to Mariko, she is the leader to the Yoshida clan. Now, the Yoshida clan is one of the big criminal empires in Tokyo, Japan. Now, the only reason why they're that big is because of her father. But apparently, before her dad had taken over the clan, the clan was not really big into doing criminal operations. They had their own thing going on. A very respectful clan of people. But her father changed things. He began to do a lot of illegal operations. And so her goal right now is to bring the clan back to what it was before her father had taken over. With all that being said, it does seem like that Mariko is making the deal with Masuo. And that's really big because Masuo is a big time criminal in Marvel Comics around this time. Especially in X-Men Comics. So it's kind of like, wait a second. If you're trying to move away from the whole criminal underworld why would you make a deal with this criminal? But getting back over to Wolverine and also Gambit, they do arrive at the police department. The problem is Jubilee is already gone. Apparently, she was transported to a facility for underage people. Now, with that being said, for Wolverine, he wants to leave. But they say you can't leave because two things. One, you still have not paid the import taxes on your motorcycle. And two, something else was shipped here to Tokyo under your name. And again, you did not pay the import taxes on that item now you have Wolverine wondering what in the world are they talking about and they say hey you know what we'll show you we're currently holding it right now in the evidence room but now I want to jump back over to Jubilee because at this point we get another character who's going to be involved in this story arc in this three-part story arc so you have Jubilee on her way over to this other facility but then she realized that there is another woman in the van with her and apparently this woman is Rico now Rico is a character we had talked about before you see there was a three-part story arc where you had Wolverine going up against the Yakuza. Now, when that happened, he was able to kill off the boss of the Yakuza. The problem was, well, Rico. You see, Rico was technically being controlled by the Yakuza boss, and she felt like because he had died, she was finally free, except she wasn't. You see, her boss was in debt to Masuo, the leader of the hand, and because her boss did not pay his debt off, now she has to. And so, you had Masuo Masuo take away her sight and say, until you are able to pay your debt off, you will be a blind woman. And so currently her goal is to kill off Jubilee to hopefully regain her sight. Now, getting back over to Wolverine and Gambit, remember that they were taken over to the evidence room to see, like, what is this other item that was imported into Tokyo? Well, we kind of find out it was that cyborg we saw earlier that was created by Donald Pierce. And apparently, the cyborg has now been officially activated and now can go after Wolverine. But if you think we're done with all these different characters being this one single story, we're not done yet because while you have Wolverine fighting against a cyborg, well, huh, you see, we kind of find out that Sunfire was called in because he heard that the X-Men were going through a certain kind of problem. So now Sunfire is also involved in this story arc. Now, for a brief moment, I want to get back over to Jubilee, and here's the reason why. So, you have Jubilee just trying to survive against Rico, but here's the thing. Rico has a blade that has a special kind of poison on it, and it's poison, well, there's no antidote for it. And that kind of poison is going to be really important, really crucial for the ending of today's video. Now, with that being said, though, you do have Rico trying her best to kill off Jubilee, until you have Jubilee say, hey, you know what? If you kill me, Wolverine gonna kill you. And that is when Rico realized, wait a second, you're close to Wolverine? I know him, and technically, I still owe the man. So like, I'm in his debt right now, which means I can't kill you off until I'm officially able to pay off my debt. Now, let's talk about who this special cyborg is. Her name is Sila Markham. Now, when it comes to Sila, this is a character we had talked about before. You see, there was a point in time where the X-Men were 
technically disbanded and you had Forge and Banshee going out of their way to find the different members of the X-Men who were also missing. With that being said, they hired Scylla to be their pilot. The problem was she had just dropped off Forge and Banshee at a location and she was going to fly away, except as soon as she pulled up in the sky, she was shot out of the sky and left to believe to be officially dead, except she had barely survived. And then she was found by Donald Pierce, who was able to give her a body, even though it is a cyborg body. And the reason why she's coming after Wolverine, because she still feels like she owes Donald Pierce to at least complete one of his missions. And one of those missions was killing off Wolverine. And so you have her right now trying to kill off our boy. Now, while you have Scylla and Wolverine fighting against each other in the evidence room in the other part of the police department, you have Gambit and Sunfire fighting against the hand because they're also there to kill off Wolverine. Masuo wants the head of Wolverine delivered to him. And so now you have a huge battle just taking place in the middle of this police department. Gambit, Sunfire fighting against the hand, Wolverine fighting against Xyla. Now I want to jump back over to Jubilee because we're not technically done introducing all these different characters in this three part story arc. You see, while you have Jubilee being able to walk away from Rico, well then she's confronted by another character who was actually close to Wolverine and that would be Yukio and she is well, a very close friend of Wolverine that we have not seen in a very long time, but hey, she's now back for today's video. And so after we dive into the second chapter, we jump back over to the police department. Now, it's just one big chaos of a battle because you have Wolverine, Gambit, and Sunfire just fighting against their enemies inside the police department. And the police, yeah, they dipped out because of them, they can't do anything at all. What can they do to stop Wolverine or Gambit or Sunfire or Crazy Cyborg or a bunch of crazy ninjas? They can't do Jack. And so, of course, they all dip out of there. Now, we do learn for Scylla that even though she's coming after Wolverine for Donald Pierce, she's also doing it because she loves the idea of just killing off people. She loves the idea of killing mutants right now, it seems. And right now, Wolverine is a big time challenge that she wants to actually bring down and so you do have a fight just going on now for Masuo he knew that Wolverine was here he knew that Gambit was here he had no idea that Sunfire was here and he's kind of wondering why in the world Sunfire is here right now in this big huge battle we know why because he heard that hey there's some stuff going on with the X-Men, and because the X-Men are his allies, he has to help them out. But yeah, you have one heck of a battle just going on inside the police department. Now, you do have Sunfire being able to use his powers in a way to kind of bring down part of the building to give Gambit and him a way to get away from the actual ninjas of the hand. Now, you do have Gambit and Sunfire being able to regroup with Wolverine, and when they do, you have Scylla just dip out because she realized that the battle is no longer in her favor because now it's three against one but you have wolverine tell gambit and also sunfire we're not going to chase her down we're not going to fight the hand we came here to tokyo to find jubilee so let's go ahead and find her and get the heck out of here now, I kind of want to jump back over to Jubilee and Yukio because I want to have a quick conversation about Yukio. Now, Yukio first appeared back in Wolverine number one, his first original series that was actually a mini series. Now, when it came to Yukio, she was working for a character known as Lord Shinjin. Now, Lord Shinjin was actually the father to Mariko, the current leader of the, well, Yoshida clan. Now, when it came to Yukio, she kind of realized that she no longer wanted to go against Wolverine and actually wanted to help him out. And really, over the years, she would reappear sometimes to help out Logan when he's in Tokyo. But with that being said, because she found Jubilee and heard that Jubilee is a friend of Wolverine, she kind of wanted to help Jubilee to also help out Wolverine. 
Now, I want to jump back over to Rico because you have Rico realizing that she now has to leave Japan because if she doesn't, well, you know, Masuo is going to kill her off because she was unable to complete the job that he had given her. Now, with that being said, though, when it comes to Rico, she does go over to a character known as Kojiro. And Kojiro has the ability to smuggle her out of the country. The problem is, though, she does not have the money to allow him to use his services. But we kind of find out that Homeboy is actually working with another group, not the hand, but actually Hydra. Yes, we're bringing in more characters into the story arc. And we kind of find out that this Hydra group is being led by Silver Fox. Now remember, Silver Fox is the leader of this faction of Hydra, but we also know that she was part of Weapon X, and that's really it. We're still learning more about this character, but she wants to use Rico against Masuo and also Wolverine. Now, getting back over to Wolverine, Sunfire, and Gambit, they're kind of wondering what to do next. And really, for Logan, he knows where he has to go next. He has to go to the one person he's really close to who has a lot of juice in Tokyo, a lot of power in Tokyo. And of course, that would be, and that would be Mariko. Now, Mariko, she's currently having a meeting with the other leaders of the clan. And they're kind of talking about the idea of, should they actually hand the clan over to Masuo because this man is already a very powerful man with the hand under his control but at the same time though for Mariko she's trying to move her clan away from the idea of being criminals so why not go ahead and hand Masuo the key to their criminal empire now that is the moment where you have silver samurai walk in now technically that is her brother, but he also was supposed to be next in line for the clan as the leader of the clan, but unfortunately, he was not chosen. She was, and with that being said, he feels like that she has been doing a horrible job, and right now, he needs to step in and take over to bring honor back into the actual clan. Now, you do have Wolverine arrive because Wolverine knows that if he needs some help, he can go to her but the problem was see okay when it comes to wolverine and mariko they were supposed to get married but the wedding was officially stopped multiple times but the last time it was stopped because to mariko she says they could not get married until she's able to remove all the bad things about her clan to bring her clan back on the side of good again until then these two characters cannot be married and matter of fact wolverine cannot be around her at all but right now he has no choice he needs her help and so she kind of feels like that he is here to help her with her masuo problem but in reality he needs her help with the whole jubilee problem but on the outside of the home of the Yoshida clan, we do see Masuo arrive with his members of the hand to have one last conversation with Mariko. And so this leads into the final chapter of today's video. And so as we get into the final chapter for today's video, we do pick up with Wolverine, Gambit, also Silver Samurai, working together to fight back against the forces of the Hand. The entire home of the Yoshida clan is now being destroyed left and right. Now, you have Mariko tell the heroes they have to escape. They have to go into the underground bunker inside the actual home of the clan. And so you have our heroes retreat, but we already know the hand is not going to give up that easily. But getting back over to Masuo, you have Masuo just waiting for the hand to be able to grab Wolverine, but to also be able to grab Mariko as well. But why is outside waiting? Well, that is when he is confronted by, well, Silver Fox. And remember, she caught Rico earlier. And so she brought Rico back here saying, I brought back the person who had failed you. And so I feel like you now owe me a favor. And so now you have the two Two leaders decide to sit down and have a conversation with one another. But getting back over to our heroes, we do learn that 
As they're trying to go to this underground bunker, they have to go through a maze. But this maze is set up with all kinds of traps to actually protect the bunker. So if the hand tries to come down there, then most likely the traps will kill them off. Now, once they're able to reach the bunker, you then have Wolverine and Mariko leave to have a private conversation with one another. Now for Mariko, she wants to know why Wolverine is there for, because she believes that with him being there, it kind of ruins the whole idea of their arrangement. Because she said, you cannot come back here until I am able to make sure my clan is free from their past. But here he is right now, but he only came here because he needs her help to find Jubilee but also figure out why the hand is coming after him. But either way, she does pull out his old Wolverine outfit, the yellow brown outfit, saying maybe you should wear this as you go out there to fight against our enemies. But getting back over to Silver Fox and also Masuo, we do see that Masuo wants to kill off Rico for, well, failing her assignment. But you have Silver Fox say no, Let's not kill her. Let's actually use her to pull off your big game plan. And so you have the two leaders, again, sit back down to have another conversation on how they can use Rico to finish their jobs. Why have all those other things going on? We do see Jubilee and Yukio decide that they should go ahead and join in on this whole big, huge battle at the compound. And so they do swing their way inside the actual place. But getting back inside the bunker, you have Silver Samurai continue to talk bad about his sister, how she's a horrible leader, that he should take over and become the actual leader of the clan to bring honor back to the clan. But while he's saying all those different things, you didn't have someone come and say the alarms have been triggered. Somebody has entered the maze and we do see that it is Rico and they plan on using Rico as a way to get to Wolverine, but as a way to get to Marie go as well. But getting back over to Jubilee and Yukio, they're on the rooftop of the actual compound, the actual bunker. But while on the roof of it, you didn't have, well, Sila up here because she's still after Wolverine. But she does know that she can use Jubilee as a way to get towards Wolverine. So she does create a hole in the actual bunker to allow Wolverine to see that Jubilee is now a prisoner. And so you have Gambit being able to blow Wolverine up into the sky to go onto the rooftops to fight against Zyla as a way to save Jubilee. Now you do have Rico being able to make it through the maze so that she's able to have a conversation with Mariko. And you have Rico say, listen, when it comes to Masuo, all he wants to do now is take over the clan to go ahead and finish the original agreement. But he kind of feels like to make sure the trade can go through, you have to offer one of your fingers. And so you have Rico pull out a knife to say, use this knife as a way to cut off your finger and then everything will be done. And Masuo will let y'all live, but also he'll now become the ruler of the actual clan's criminal empire. But this leads into the very sad moment of the book. So let me explain. While you have Wolverine fighting against Zyla, well, you have Mariko and everyone else in the bunker kind of wondering, is the knife actually poison? Because if it is, it's going to kill off Mariko in a matter of minutes. But you have Rico say, no, the knife is not poison at all. Now, we do learn that it actually is poison because outside, you still have Masuo and Sir Fox talking to one another. And he says, listen, when it comes to Rico, over the years, she has taken in small portions of the actual poison to allow herself to become very immune to the actual poison. So if they try to test it on her, well, she won't die. But somebody who has not even taken a small portion of the actual poison is going to die in a matter of minutes. And so getting back inside for Mariko, she does test it on Rico. And Rico is all like, see, it's not poison. And so you have Mariko go ahead and use the knife on herself to show it was actually poison. And so now we're entering the death of Mariko. And you have Wolverine being able to work with Jubilee to get rid of Sila, but then he realized that the woman he loves is on the verge of dying. 
And so you have Wolverine being able to go back down the bunker, pick up Mariko, go into a private room where she basically begs him to go ahead and kill her off because she hates the idea of just waiting for the poison to kill her off. But for Wolverine, it's kind of like, they were so close in being able to reach their goal, being able to reach the goal of being a married couple. But unfortunately, it's now being taken away from them. And so Wolverine does it. And once he does, he walks out of the private room to show everyone what he had to do to the woman he loves. But with that being said, this is... What's going on there, YouTube? Welcome back to another comic book video. Okay, so we're going to continue our coverage over the X-Men, but now it's time for us to dive into more Wolverine comics. Now, we're going to cover a two-part story arc where it's technically Wolverine teaming up with Jubilee and another character known as Terror to save a young girl. Now, I really want to do the story arc because of the character known as Terror. For me personally, he's kind of cool, but for Marvel Comics, he's very obscured. I feel like not a lot of fans actually know about him. So later on in this video, I kind of want to sit down and have a small conversation about this character. Now, this two-part story arc does pick up where our last one left off at. You see, in our last video, when it came to Wolverine, he lost the woman he loved, and her name was Mariko. Now, when it came to Mariko and Wolverine, they did plan on getting married to one another. The problem was, though, well, Mariko had a goal that she was trying to achieve. Let me explain. You see, when it came to Mariko, recently, she had taken over her father's clan. The problem was, her father's clan was really evil they had a whole criminal empire in tokyo japan and so for mariko she wanted to bring honor back into her clan to move the clan away from all the crime that they did under her father's control but the problem was though right when it seemed like she was going to be able to achieve that goal she was killed off by poison and unfortunately that means wolverine was no longer able to marry the woman he loved. And so this two-part story is kind of Wolverine trying to move on from that moment, a very heartbreaking moment. But while you have Wolverine walking around the mansion, feeling sad about the idea of losing Mariko, he overhears a conversation going on between, well, between Charles Xavier and another character known as Barton Huff. Now, Barton Huff is a very wealthy man. He owns his own big lumber company. And really, that's the big problem right there. You see, when it comes to Barton Huff and his lumber company, he's going around to different areas, cutting down trees left and right. And he has ticked off the wrong set of people, a eco-terrorist group known as the Nature Defense League. And so they're very upset with the idea that Barton and his company are going around cutting down trees in many different areas around the world. And so because of that, they kidnapped his daughter. Now, for Barton, he heard a very big secret about Charles Xavier, about the idea that Charles is actually the leader of the X-Men. You see, around his time in Marvel Comics, the world did not know that Charles was actually a mutant, that Charles was actually the leader of the X-Men. And so for Charles, he has to continue to play the idea that his school for gifted children is not really for mutants, but more like, hey, kids who are special in their own kind of way. And no, there are no X-Men here. But in reality, the X-Men are his students and they do live there and he is their leader. And so you have Charles continue to play the idea that he has no idea what Barton is talking about. But right after you had Charles and Barton being able to finish their meeting, you then have Wolverine kind of realize that Barton left behind a book. Inside that book is a chunk of hair that belonged to his missing daughter. And so for Logan, he says, you know what? It's time for me to get involved to hopefully find this young missing woman. Now, you do have Logan say, hey, Jubilee, you are coming with me on this big adventure. And she agrees like no big deal. 
But now you have Wolverine and Jubilee head over to Oregon. And the reason why, because in that state, Barton has a lot of sites that are currently being used to cut down a lot of trees. And so for Wolverine and also Jubilee, the NDL is most likely in Oregon as well, and most likely holding on to his daughter in that area. And so you have Logan and Jubilee going around trying to ask any information about the missing girl. The problem is they're outsiders and nobody wants to talk to outsiders. And so unfortunately for Logan and Jubilee, they have to go to plan B. And so you have Logan say, you know what? I got an idea. Let's go ahead and stake out one of the sites that are being controlled by Barton because if the NDL are here, then most likely they are going to attack all the sites that are being controlled by Barton. If we keep eyes on one of them, then most likely we can find a member of the NDL and get information out of that member. Now, for Logan and Jubilee, they do get lucky because while sticking out one of the sites that do belong to Barton Huff, you do have a member of the NDL appear. Now, this member, his name is Lance. And when it comes to Lance, well, he has a grenade with him. And he does plan on using that grenade to blow up one of the machines that are currently used at this site. Now, you do have Logan being able to get the jump on Lance. The problem is, well, Lance had already pulled the pin from the grenade, and so that grenade is going off very soon. As a matter of fact, it does. But luckily for Lance, Logan saved his life. The problem is, you have Lance try to attack Logan, but Logan is a great skill fighter, and he was able to get the upper hand on Lance very easily. Now, for Logan, he did plan on using Lance as a way to get information on the missing girl. But for Lance, he's kind of like, nah, there's no way you're going to take me in. So you have Lance actually commit suicide because there was a shard of metal nearby and you have Lance just jump on that shard and let it impale him in the neck killing him off just like that. Now for Jubilee, it does seem like, okay, this plan is a complete failure. But for Logan, he says, no, I know a guy who can actually still help us when it comes to this kind of problem. Now you do have Wolverine and Jubilee head over to a nearby morgue. Now, when they do arrive at the morgue, you do have Jubilee be introduced to a character known as Terror. Now, Terror first appeared in St. George issue number two. I'm not gonna sit down and try to explain what the heck St. George is all about, but for Terror, he's from the distant past. You see, when he came to a small tribe, way 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 in the past they fought a demon that looked very similar to a green bear except for terror he was the one who had actually killed off the demon that looked like a green bear but there was a curse and with that curse his skin began to turn green and well he became like a zombie now with that being said terror has the ability to take other people's body parts and use them as his own but here's the catcher though he's also also able to see everything that person remembers and so the reason why you have Wolverine call up terror is to go ahead and use his powers on the dead body of of Lance and so with terror being able to take a body part of Lance he is able to see everything that Lance remembers so for terror he was able to realize that and the NDL is now being led by a guy known as Johnny Bloodseed, who has formed his own organization and has turned it into a cult for environmental fanatics who are willing to take extreme measures to help protect nature. Now, you do have Terra say he also sees the young girl who's missing with Johnny as well. But he also tells us that, well, Johnny also does, you know, regular sermons and begun calling himself Monkey Ranch. Now that is a very horrible, horrible name. Now for our heroes, they're then confronted by Monkey Ranch and a few other members of the NDL. They came to the morgue to retrieve the body of Lance. So you do have a huge battle take place in the middle of the morgue. Now when it comes to our heroes, at first, it does seem like maybe they can hold their own, but unfortunately our heroes do get overpowered by all the different members of the NDL. Now when it comes to Logan, he does try his best to take on Monkey 
Wolverine. But Munkerin is able to hit Wolverine out the window. Now, you do have them being able to escape. Now, Jubilee and Terror, they want to make sure that Wolverine is okay because Homeboy just got smashed right out the window, which he is okay. But the problem was, though, you have Monkey Ranch being able to put a spike into Wolverine's chest. Now, usually, this would not be a huge problem because of his healing factor. Pull the spike out, it'll heal up very easily. But the problem is, though, this spike apparently has a bomb placed inside of it. So, if it is pulled out wrong, boom. There goes Wolverine, and most likely, he will not be able to heal up from that kind of injury. And so as we dive into the next chapter, we do pick up with Wolverine, Jubilee, and Terror trying to find a way to remove the bomb in Wolverine's chest. Now, for Terror, he does have a game plan here to drop Wolverine in freezing water because the freezing water should slow down the bomb long enough to allow Wolverine to remove it, get far away from it before it does explode. The problem is, though, once you have Wolverine's body drop in freezing water, his survival instinct kicks in and he's fighting to survive and so for Wolverine the whole thing right now is he's trying to fight against terror to get out of the freezing water except you have terror let go of Wolverine he falls deep into the freezing water and the currents begin to carry him away now luckily for Logan terror and Jubilee were able to find him and get him out of the water and also Wolverine was able to pull the spike out of his chest and the bomb does go off, but luckily, our heroes were far from the explosion. But now we have to jump back over to Monkey Wrench. And we see Monkey Wrench kind of giving one of his extreme sermons to his people. And they are loving it a lot. The idea of continuing to do their work. But then we see he has Alice, the missing girl. Now for him, he's trying his best to convert her over to his side, over to his cult. But she says no. Now we do learn a tad bit about the character. We do learn that apparently she was kind of against her father's plans for the environment. But not this kind of plan. The whole idea of being extreme and trying to kill off people to make a statement. But either way, you have Monkey and Ranch trying to convince her to join the cult. She says says no and now he is going to use her as an example for his purpose but getting back over to wolverine and jubilee and also terror we do see that wolverine gave himself a haircut so that he'll be able to sneak his way into the ndl organization to get close enough to monkey ranch and to also be able to you know find alice now he does cut all his hair off just in case Monkey Ranch is able to recognize Logan. So now our homeboy got a clean cut and he's ready to go undercover. But the following day, we do pick up with a different branch of the NDL. Now, this branch is being led by a character known as Jake Grenfire. Now, Jake is trying to lead a more peaceful branch of the NDL when it comes to their ideas of reaching their goals. They hate the idea of killing golf people or doing other kinds of extreme things. But the problem is they are confronted by the other branch that's being led by Monkey Ranch. Now, you do have the other branch try to attack Jake but then we have Wolverine appear and take Jake out or supposedly take Jake out so that he is able to get an offer to join the other branch that's being led by Monkey Wrench to hopefully get close to Monkey Wrench but to also find the missing girl after you have Wolverine walk away, we do learn that, well, Jake was part of the plan. So he faked the idea of being killed off and then have Terror and Jubilee follow Logan to hopefully help Logan take down Monkey Ranch and his crew, but to also find the missing woman. Now, really, the rest of the book is really more of Wolverine being able to get into the actual group of the NDL that's being led by Monkey Ranch, but also being able to fight against him and his crew. Now, you do have Jubilee there and also Terror there as well to help out. And the three characters are actually able to take down the entire group being led by Monkey Ranch. And you have Wolverine being able to find the missing girl just in time. And so technically the day is saved. 
Now, the book really does end on a very good note where you do have Brayton being very excited about the idea of having his daughter back. Now, at first, he does believe it was Jay Gwynfire who had kidnapped his daughter, not knowing that Jay Gwynfire was part of a different group of the NDL who actually helped Logan get his daughter back. But either way, you do have the book kind of end on a good note where you kind of have Brayton say, you know what? maybe I should possibly slow down my whole logging company a tad bit. And really, that's it. And so this is... What's going on there, YouTube? Welcome back to another comic book video. Okay, so we're going to continue our coverage over X-Men comics. And now we have to jump back over to some more Wolverine comics. Now, like I said a couple videos ago, we're going to cover a lot of Wolverine content on this channel for the next couple of weeks before we are able to dive back into the other X titles, really the X teams of the X titles like X Factor, Excalibur, and both of the X-Men team and X-Force as well. Now with that being said, today's video, we're only gonna cover one single issue. And the reason why, because this one single issue is really trying to wrap up things that we had talked about in previous videos in earlier story arcs, but also kind of getting us ready for the next few story arcs we're going to cover when it comes to Wolverine comics. Now, when it comes to this one single issue, we're also seeing the return of a certain character known as Shiva going after, well, Sabretooth. And we had actually talked about Shiva in one of our earlier videos. Now, something else I do want to mention is that when it comes to Wolverine issue number 60, it does take place between issues number 57 and 58. And the reason why I'm saying that because the opening pages of this book does pick up moments after the ending of issue number 57. Let me explain. So at the end of that book, Wolverine lost the woman he loved, and that would be Mariko. Now remember, Mariko and Wolverine, they were supposed to get married to one another. The problem was though, she had a goal to accomplish at first. And that goal was to bring honor back into her clan. Now, the name of her clan was Clan Yoshida. And the problem was though, her father was the previous leader. And her father ran a criminal empire throughout the clan. And so for Mariko, her goal was to bring honor back into her clan, to move the clan away from doing any kind of criminal activities. Now, it did seem like she was on the verge of actually accomplishing that goal. But the problem was, though, she was killed off. And so Wolverine, he was kind of like, we were so close of being able to actually get married. And then she was taken away from me. And so in the opening pages of Wolverine issue number 60, and so getting back over to the opening pages of this book, we do pick go at Wolverine at the graveyard site for, well, Mariko. And this is him kind of just stuck in position where he does not want to leave her grave. Now, Jubilee and Gambit, they're there as well, and they feel sorry for the man. Now, there is another character, and that would be Yukio. But honestly, I'm not going to sit down and talk about her at all because right now she's not really important for this video. But just know that she was a previous lover for Logan as well. Either way, for Gammon and Jubilee, they're really worried about Wolverine because this man just lost the woman he loved so much. Now, there is another lover we have to talk about, and that would be Silver Fox. Now, when we first met the character, we were told that she was killed off by the hands of Sabretooth. And matter of fact, we also learned that she was a past lover of Logan. Now, the problem was, though, a couple story arcs ago, we had learned that she wasn't dead. And matter of fact, she was a leader of Hydra. Now things get even crazier because we also learned that she was part of Weapon X alongside with Logan and also Sabretooth as well. Now the only reason why she's being brought up right now because of Mariko. You see for Logan he had learned that 
Well, even though he believed that he was in some kind of relationship with Silver Fox in the past, he had learned that some other things that he remembered was not actually real at all because somebody gave him false memories. And so for Logan, he's kind of wondering, did that past actually happen in the idea that he was in love with Silver Fox? Now, with that being said, the only reason Watch being brought up is because Mariko. Because right now, Logan is going through a whole grieving process of the idea of losing a significant other. But for Logan, he's kind of wondering, did he go through this before when it came to Silver Fox? But now we jump over to Sabretooth. Now, like I said earlier, when it came to Sabretooth, he was part of the Weapon Next program alongside with Wolverine and also, well, Silver Fox. Now, just like those other two characters, his mind was wiped as well. His mind was altered by Weapon X because Weapon X wanted to make sure that all their subjects did not remember their time with the actual program, but to make sure that Weapon X stays a big secret. Now, as we saw a couple story arcs ago, Cyclops on a list of names of people who were all subjects for the actual program. Logan, Sabretooth, and Silver Fox. Now, there were other people on that list, but by this point in Marvel Comics, we have no idea who those people were. Now, with all that being said, though, you see, when it came to Weapon X, like I said earlier, they wanted to make sure they stayed a secret. They wanted to make sure that their subjects did not remember anything at all and then expose the actual program. And so they created a robot called Shiva. You see, when it comes to Shiva, Shiva is a program that is able to create robots to go after the different subjects to make sure they don't expose Weapon X. Now, with that being said, when it comes to Shiva and his robots, let's just say that one of those subjects are able to take down that robot. Well, you see, then Shiva will be able to collect data on that battle. And so when it goes to create a new robot, that new robot cannot be defeated the same way as the last one making it harder for our subjects to get away. Now, in our last, not last video, but like a couple story arcs ago, we had to technically see that originally Wolverine was the main target, but then the main target was changed over to Sabretooth. And so now Shiva is hunting him down. Now, another character who's going to be really important for this video, but other videos down the road, is a character known as John Wraith. Now, John Wraith is, well, he was part of Team X. And remember, the only thing we know so far about Team X is that they were a team of characters who worked for the CIA. So, like Maverick, Sabretooth, and also Wolverine. But apparently, so did John Wraith as well. Now, when we do pick up with the character, he's on the subway and he's being bothered by two different groups of thugs, but either way, he's able to get off the subway because he has something big to do for a certain character. Now, Sabretooth and John Wraith, they're actually in New York, while you have Wolverine, Gambit, and Jubilee in Tokyo, Japan with the whole Mariko's death. But now we jump over to Masuo. Now remember, Masuo is responsible for the death of Mariko because when it came to Mariko, she wanted to get rid of the criminal empire that had connections to her actual clan. And Masuo was supposed to take over that empire to finally help her reach her goal. But the problem was that deal did not go through for many reasons. Either way, you have Masuo tell his guys, or really tell one special assassin, to get close to Mariko and actually kill her, which they did. And so for Masuo, he's also upset Wolverine because there was a point in time where Wolverine had actually cut off Masuo's hand. And so he's hoping his new hand that has, you know, razor fingers will be able to help him to kill off Logan. He wants revenge against Logan for losing his hand. 
Now, Mariko had a cousin. Now would be Sunfire. Now, Sunfire is a longtime ally of the X-Men. Matter of fact, he was an X-Men. With that being said, when it came to the Japanese government, they told Sunfire, we're going to need your help to escort your friends out of our country right now because they want to make sure that Logan does not cause chaos in Tokyo to only get revenge against Masuo for the death of Mariko. Either way, you have Sunfire saying, hey guys, listen, I can't tell you guys, it's time for you guys to go. It's time for you to get on the airplane and head back home to America. But then you have Logan overhear the name Wraith. Now when he does, he remembers that there was somebody else on his team, Team X, in the past with that last name. And that would be John Wraith. Now John Wraith is the guy we saw earlier on the subway. Now we also learned that Wraith was there that night where Team X had stolen the Carbonadium Synchronizer. Now, we have learned back in X-Men issues 4, 5, 6, and 7 that in the past, Team X was assigned to steal the Carbonadium Synchronizer to get away from Omega Red, who needs that item to stay alive. Now, in those four issues over in X-Men, we have learned that Team X was able to get the item and get the heck out of there. But we had no idea how they were able to get away. And apparently because of John Wraith. He was part of Team X. And he said, hey guys, listen. Take my vehicle and get the heck out of here. I'll try my best to hold down Omega Red to allow you guys enough time to get that item back over to base. And so apparently the last time Team X saw him was him going up against Omega Red. And really they had no idea if he survived or not. But I want to get back over to the battle between Sabretooth and Shiva. Now, really, you have Sabretooth being able to do some serious damage to Shiva. But you have Shiva then say, you know what? I'm going to use a memory backlash on you. Now, a memory backlash is a way for the different subjects to experience all the worst times from their past. Physical or mental. All the worst moments. Even the ones that were basically suppressed. And so with that being said, we do jump back to a flashback where we see Sabretooth kind of like being a stepfather or an adoptive father towards Wolverine. Because we now see Wolverine, a young boy, being raised by Sabretooth. And really, you have Sabretooth being very upset with Wolverine. And the reason why? Because he was spending a lot of time with Silver Fox. Apparently, they were a very, very young couple. Now, with that being said, though, you have Sabretooth being able to come back into reality thanks to John Ray. Because John Ray does appear in this flashback or supposed flashback, but he's not really there. Instead, he's there to say, hey, Sabretooth, I'm going to need you to go ahead and come back to reality. What you're seeing right now, the young Wolverine in the cabin and all that stuff, is not real. Right now, you're being attacked by Shiva. But you do have John being able to get rid of Shiva for Sabretooth. Now, Sabretooth, he does remember John Wraith. Not completely, but he's now beginning to remember the time where back when they fought against Omega Red. Either way, it did seem like John came here to save Sabretooth from Shiva, but also for another purpose. Either way, you do have the two characters being able to, well, get away. But let's get over to Tokyo because the ending of this book really does tell us that Wolverine is not ever going to be done with Masuo. You see, while you have Masuo just chilling in his penthouse and while you have, well, Jubilee Gambit Wolverine on the way over to the airport, Wolverine does pick up the scent of Masuo and he does leave the limo that was heading towards the airport to go have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with Masuo. And really, the ending of this book is really more Wolverine saying, I'm not going to kill you just yet, Masuo. Like, even though you are responsible for the death of the woman I love, I'm not going to kill you just yet. Instead, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to pay you a visit over and over again. With each visit, I'm going to cut off a different part of your body, cutting you down piece by piece. So that hand of yours, your brand new hand you received, after you lost the last hand towards me, 
I will go ahead and cut that hand off for you right now. I'm gonna tell you, the next time I see you, I'm gonna cut something else. And who knows, it could be a foot, a leg, a finger, or maybe a ear. Either way though, I'm gonna see you over and over again. And every plan you have, I'm going to ruin those plans as well. And you have Wolverine, walk away. And that's really it. Okay, so getting back into our coverage over the X-Men, we have now reached a point where we're going to jump back over to Wolverine Comics. Now, this is the point in our coverage where we're going to wrap up the whole idea of Silver Fox. Let me explain. So back in the early days of Wolverine Comics, we were introduced to the idea of a character known as Silver Fox. Now, we were told that she was just a past lover of Wolverine, but on top of that, she was killed off by Sabretooth kind of did establish the whole idea that those two characters, Wolverine and Sabretooth, have a past with one another. But that's all we got back in the early days of Wolverine comics. But then many years later, we had learned that no, she was not dead, that she was actually alive. And matter of fact, she was one of the many leaders of Hydra. Now we also learned that for Logan, some of the things that he remembers from his past were actually false memories that were implanted in his mind by Weapon X. And really, other test subjects like Sabretooth, Silver Fox, they also went through the same procedures as well. And so unfortunately, you have all these different characters who were part of Weapon X trying to figure out which things are real or which things are fake from their past. For example, for Logan, he's kind of wondering, was he ever in love with Silver Fox in the past? And so getting into today's video, we actually do pick up with Wolverine going through a dream sequence. Now, the dream he's going through is actually Wolverine being attacked by three different characters. And that will be Silver Fox, Sabretooth, and also Wraith. Now, when it comes to Wraith, by this point in our coverage, we don't know much about the character. All we know is that he was part of Team X alongside with Wolverine, Maverick, and Sabretooth a team of characters that were technically used by the CIA to complete different missions around the world. We also know that he was also part of Weapon X alongside with the same characters, which also means that some of the things that he does remember could be real or it could be fake because again, he was given fake memories implanted inside his mind. Either way, getting back to Logan's dream sequence, he's being attacked by those three characters, but then he is saved by those three characters again, but different versions of those characters. And it kind of shows that is Logan wondering which versions of those characters does he actually remember? Them as friends or them as enemies? And it kind of shows Logan he wants to know the actual truth of his past. Now you do have Logan be woken up by Jubilee. And really it's more of Jubilee telling Logan that their flight back over to LA has now been changed and they're now heading over to the S.H.I.E.L.D. helicarrier. And the reason why because well Nick Fury needs to have a conversation with with Logan and really the conversation is not that long it's really more of Nick saying hey man listen the reason why I brought you over here to my helicarrier is because somebody who has way more power than I do a shield is calling for a meeting with you a one-on-one -on -one meeting which means Jubilee cannot go now for Logan that's not okay at all. Jubilee must come with him, no matter what. And yes, he is down to meet this one person in this one-on-one -on -one meeting that's now a two-on-one -on meeting. But either way, you have Nick begin the process of taking Logan and Jubilee to meet this mysterious person. And so you have Logan and also Jubilee be transported over to a battlefield. Now for Logan, he's kind of wondering what is the point of this battlefield? But you didn't have Logan and Jubilee then be confronted by Wraith. Now let's not forget that Wraith was also part of Team X, part of Weapon X. But the problem is Logan has only recently began to remember different things about Wraith. And so for Wraith, he asked Logan, 
do you remember me at all? And for Logan, it's technically a no because he only has small pieces of his memories of times of being with Wraith. And so you have Wraith say, let me go ahead and help jog your mind a tad bit to help you remember who I am. And so we do get a small flashback of where you have Logan, Sabretooth, and also Wraith on a mission in Southeast Asia where they had killed off a woman, an innocent woman who had saw them commit crimes in that area for the CIA. And with her being a witness, she had to go. And that does help Logan begin to remember some things about Wraith, his character. But something else we have to remember is that when it comes to Wraith, he was also there in the past when it came to Logan, Sabretooth, and Maverick going up against Omega Red. Because we had learned back in X-Men issues 4, 5, 6, and 7 that when it came to Wolverine in the past being part of Team X, part of CIA, him and his team went after Omega Red Steel, the Carbonadium Synchronizer, and they were only able to get away just barely, but it was because of Wraith that they were able to get away, because Wraith has the ability to, well, teleport. Now, we don't know officially if he is a mutant just yet, but we do know that he can teleport. Either way, it's now Wolverine saying, yeah, I kind of do remember some things about you. But you didn't have Wraith go ahead and present a head of Shiva. Now, we had actually talked about Shiva before. You see, when it comes to Shiva, it's a program that was created by Weapon X to go after the different test subjects of Weapon X, Wolverine. Sabretooth, Wraith, Mastodon, Silver Fox, and the reason why? To make sure there is no chance those characters can leak any information about Weapon X to the public. And so with that being said, when it came to the Shiva program, it was able to make robots to go after the different test subjects. Now, if one of those characters were able to kill off that robot, the new robot will learn from the failures of the previous one, making a new one a harder challenge for the different test subjects out there like Logan, Sabretooth, and the list goes on. Now, something else that Shiva can do is send a huge backlash into your mind to make you remember different things about your past. Really, all the worst things about your past. And so we do see that there was another mission right after JFK was assassinated, where you had Wolverine, Sabretooth, and Wraith, and also Macedon, another test subject of Weapon X, went on a mission in Cuba to attack a military facility. But apparently out of nowhere, Wraith was attacked by some random tentacles that were being controlled by Silver Fox. And that is the only thing we get from that flashback. And then we jump back to the present day. And so once you have Logan being able to come back to the present day, he does ask Wraith like, hey, what is this all about? Like, what are you trying to show me? And you have Wraith say, listen, let's continue on with our conversation at my house. And so you have Wraith tell Logan and Jubilee to follow him back to his house so that they are able to continue on with the conversation. The problem is when they get to his house, they realize that somebody recently had broken into the place. Now, for our heroes at first, they're kind of wondering, could this be somebody working alongside with Weapon X? It's not. Really, it's just a bunch of kids who broke into his house to steal his TV. And so you have Ray say, hey, here's my TV. Get the heck out of here now so that we are able to continue on with the conversation that I'm trying to have with Logan. And so you have Ray show Wolverine what he wants to talk about. The idea of Macedon. You see, when it came to the different test subjects of Weapon X, they all had a healing factor in a way where it slowed down their aging process. So even though they're like 100 years old, they only look like 20 or 30 years old. But the problem is for Macedon, something happened to his healing factor where it's no longer slowing down his aging process. Instead, all those years that he was able to live on as an old man but still look young has caught up to him. And so now 
he looks like an old man and very soon he is going to die. And so for Wraith, he's kind of wondering, will the same thing happen to him and all the other test subjects? Now, we also kind of find out that Wraith did not just bring Mastodon here, he brought somebody else here. He brought Sabretooth. And let's not forget that these two characters, Wolverine and Sabretooth, they truly do hate one another. And we're only slowly beginning to remember or seeing the reasons why these two characters hate one another. And so as we dive into the second chapter, we actually do pick up with Wolverine fighting against Sabretooth. Now really, this is kind of re-establishing the whole idea of their hatred for one another. Now for Sabretooth, we don't really know by this point and why he hates Logan so much for, but for Logan, we know why he hates Sabretooth for, because well, in the past, supposedly, Logan had lost the woman he loved, Silver Fox, to Sabretooth. Now again, we don't know if that is actually true because we realize that earlier on in our coverage, she was still alive and she was now a leader of Hydra. And speaking of her, she does appear out of nowhere and she does make both characters stop in their tracks. Now for Wolverine, he technically had no idea she was alive. We knew as the readers, but he had no idea. The only only thing he knew was that there is a possibility that his past with her could have been faked. And on top of that, for Sabretooth, he believed that he did kill her off, but now here she is, standing in the same room with them. And so let's not forget, when it comes to Silver Fox, she was also given fake memories as well, like the rest of the test subjects of Weapon X, which means that she has no idea if she had ever truly loved Wolverine in the past. Did they actually spend time together in that cabin in the past? Did she actually die and somehow came back to life like she did in the past? Now, let's not forget that also early on in our coverage, we had learned that apparently Sabretooth could possibly be the father to Wolverine. Now, technically, not his biological father. It does seem like he took Logan in and raised Logan because we also saw moments where Logan had met through Fox when she was a young woman and they had love all the way back then but for Sabretooth he hated the idea of Logan spending time with her and so now the big question is did that actually happen was Sabretooth was kind of like the guardian for Logan now the reason why she's here is the same thing for Wraith but also to figure out what is the true secrets behind their past with Weapon X? And so she tells every single person in the room to follow her back upstairs because she brought somebody with her they need to have a conversation with. And that would be Carol Hines. Now, we had actually talked about her character in the past. You see, when it comes to Carol, she was part of the Weapon X program along with other two people who basically ran the program. Now, for Carol, it kind of seemed like she had a minor role in the actual organization, but technically at this point, she's only one of the last few survivors of the actual program. So if our characters want to get any kind of information about Weapon X, She's the best person to get that kind of information they're looking for. Now, for Wolverine and also Wraith, they're not really down with the idea of torturing Carol to get that information that they are technically looking for. But at the same time, though, they don't have a choice here. If they want to know more about their past, they're going to go ahead and torture her to get that kind of information that they are looking well for. Now, with all that being said, though, you didn't have Jubilee bring out, well, Macedon, and he dies at this exact moment. And the reason why? because he liquefies right in front of every single person in the yard. And so now you have all the different test subjects of Weapon X wondering, could that possibly happen to them as well? Now for Carol, she tells us this is a side effect of the whole idea of Weapon X implanting fake memories in the minds of all the different test subjects. Now, with all that being said, she also tells us one big fact about Weapon X. The whole idea that Weapon X used to make deals with ultra cover agencies in the States, but also in Cuba as well. 
But then we are now introduced to a character known as Ornetti. Now, really, I'm not going to sit down and try to explain who Ornetti is. Just know that this dude is one heck of a hacker, where he was actually able to hack into the NSA to hopefully help our heroes figure out what in the world is going on with Weapon X? Now, after a while, he was actually able to gather a lot of information about Weapon X and the whole idea of what the program was trying to do. But the main piece that he was able to receive is one of the actual people who helped fund the program. And that'll be a character known as Aldo Faro. Now, Aldo Faro was a crime boss, like I said, though, who did use his money to help fund the actual project. Now they do learn that uh, Aldo is actually still alive. And matter of fact, he lives on a private island off the coast of Washington State. And so you have our hero say, so you know what? It's time for us to pay him a good old visit. Now, for our heroes, on their way over to the actual private island of Aldo Faro, they learn that the actual island is protected very well. So, while they're trying to fly over there by using a ship by or aircraft made by Hydra, well, they're shot out of sky very quickly, and they do crash land on the actual island. Now, once you have them being able to break into the actual facility or the base of Aldo Faro, they do find the man. Now, at first, it's kind of like there's no way that this is Aldo Faro because he looks so young. He looks so buff and strong. There's no way it could be him. But you have Aldo say, no, it's me. And the only reason why I look so young is kind of like the same reason why you guys also look young as well. Kind of hinting at the idea that maybe he has a healing factor that slows down his actual aging process but then you have everyone be confronted by his bodyguard and his bodyguard is maverick another member or another subject of weapon x but also was a team member of wolverine and sabertooth when they were on team x and so now for some reason Maverick is here to protect the man who had most likely played with his mind like he did with the other members of Weapon X. And so as we get into the third chapter, we really see Wolverine and other members of his team being very upset that Maverick has gone out of his way to protect Aldo Faro. Because Aldo is the man who had funded Weapon X and most likely knows what happened to their minds when they're all test subjects for Weapon X. And so for Wolverine, he's kind of like, dude, get out of the way because we have to talk to the man. But Maverick says, no, Aldo Faro is now being protected by the federal government. Now, you also have Sabretooth also hint at the idea that he does remember Team X. Now, let's not forget that over time, Wolverine has begun the process of remembering his time with Team X. Not not completely, but different moments in time when he was with Team X. And so for Saber 2 saying, oh yeah, like the old days, we're all here together again, Team X, you have all those say, hmm, I'm kind of surprised that you remember that Saber Tooth. And for Wolverine, it leads into a flashback. Now, it's not a complete flashback. Like, it's not the idea of us sitting down and being able to see some different big moments in time of Wolverine working with the other members of Team X, but we do get confirmation that, yeah, Team X was a real thing. Wolverine, Sabretooth, Maverick, Mastodon, Wraith, and also Silver Fox. They were all part of that team. Now, with all that being said, you didn't have Wolverine be told by Aldo that technically the only reason why he begun to help fund Weapon Next because he has the ability to implant false memories into people's minds. And so because of that ability, he loved the idea to kind of have some pleasure to to play with the mind of different subjects of Weapon X, like Wolverine, Sabretooth, and the list goes on. That is the only reason why he begun to help out Weapon X. It's the only reason why he begun to help fund the actual organization. The pleasure, the idea of playing with the minds of different people to make them wonder down the road what was real and what was not real.
Now you have Wolverine being able to snap back into reality, kind of like, oh, okay, my mind was being played with by Aldo. But then you have Logan also realize that the other people in the actual room, the other members of Team X, they're all being affected as well by Aldo's mind abilities. He's currently having each member of Team X reliving the worst moments of their lives. Now with all that being said, you then have Jubilee, the one person in the room Room who's not truly affected by all those powers throw a brick at him which didn't release the other member of team x from his control now you didn't have carol hines tell us that when it comes to aldo apparently has some work done on him he wanted to live forever but he also wanted something else from the, each of the different test subjects of weapon x now before she's able to reveal what that is she also tell us that that weapon x realized that he was not trying to help their actual program their actual project that he only wanted to play with the minds of other people but then she explains to us that aldo is a cyborg but like i said unfortunately before she's able to explain what a cyborg truly is well you then have aldo begin to mutate into a weird creature where he is able to snap her neck and then he continues to mutate to the point where he basically explodes. And it's kind of like, okay, he's now gone, but now Carol Hines is officially dead. Now for most characters in the room, they're just trying to figure out what in the world is going on here. But for Logan, he's taking this opportunity to say, you know what, maybe there is a possibility that me and Silver Fox were actually in love in the past because even though Aldo did admit that he did play with the minds of the different characters on Team X that maybe the reason why Sir Fox is not trying to believe in the idea that she did have a past with Wolverine is because Aldo played with her mind to give her false emotions but Sir Fox is kind of like dude we have no idea what is real and what is not until we are able to to get those answers we cannot play with the emotions of our past like yes you want to believe that we were in love and you believe that the reason why i'm not trying to love you back is because the possibility he played with my mind but we have no idea if i actually was in love with you in the past and then you have rafe being able to find a secret passageway because aldo does have a huge amount of psychic powers that it does tick off cerebral in the idea that there is someone out there with huge psychic abilities. Now for Charles Xavier and Jean Grey back at the X Mansion, they're kind of wondering how in the world has Cerebro never been able to detect the mind of Aldo Ferro? Like someone like his kind of power should have been easily picked up by Cerebro, but apparently he was able to hide from the great machine. But the question is right now, how? Getting back over to Team Max, they continue to go deep into the tunnels that was apparently founded by Wraith, this secret passageway that leads over to a supercomputer. Now, this supercomputer is apparently holding on information where Aldo Ferro was trying to figure out something very important about Wolverine trying to learn more about Logan's DNA matrix. Now, here's the big catch though. You see, Silver Fox was able to access this supercomputer without any kind of defense, any kind of hardware to make sure that anybody would not be able to easily access this file. And so it does seem like Aldo Ferro was really trying to allow Team X to learn a tad bit about him and what he was trying to do. But then, out of nowhere, the computer changed into this weird kind of figure, turned to the face of Aldo Ferro, but then he's able to pull in Silver Fox into his actual body. The computer turned into his body and then he grabs Silver Fox to take her away. Now for Logan, he's freaking out because he's trying to figure out, is he about to lose the woman he loved in the past a second time? And so you have Wolverine just hacking away at this computer, hoping to find Silver Fox inside of there, except he comes to find out that it was just one big illusion that was being done 
by Aldo Ferro. Now, this moment right here is really important for later books when they do try to explain what exactly went down in this moment, but also for the character of Silver Fox. But it does seem like she's no longer there because the only thing left from her is the medicine pouch from the past of Wolverine and Silver Fox when they had spent time together in that cabin. Now, with all that being said, Back at the top of the secret passageway, Jubilee is up there. She did not go down with Team X. But then out of nowhere, Charles Xavier and Jean Grey appear. And apparently they are there to actually help out Jubilee and Team X to figure out what's going on with Aldo Ferro. But this is another illusion being done by him. This is not Jean Grey nor Charles Xavier. So when Jubilee turns around to inform Team Max who had arrived, she has no idea the two people behind her are beginning to mutate and they are about to get the jump on her. And so as we get into the fourth chapter, we see that we now have Wolverine being very upset in the idea that this man had just lost Silver Fox all over again. The woman that he was just able to reunite with was taken away from him. And so because of that, you now have Wolverine just going on a rampage. This is a man destroying every single piece of technology that was being used by Aldo Ferro. Now the other members of Team X, they also begin to destroy the entire place as well. Because they realize if they want to have another conversation with Aldo Ferro, well the only way to bring him out is to destroy everything that belongs to him. But getting back over to Jubilee, you have Jubilee still believing that she's still with Jean Grey and Charles Xavier, but in reality, she's not. Those two characters are not really there. It's just Aldo Ferro using his psychic abilities to create illusions behind Jubilee. But once you have Jubilee tell Aldo Ferro what Wolverine and the rest of the characters downstairs are doing to his supercomputer, he freaks out and he goes straight down to the bottom level. And when he does, he does reveal his true actual form, that he is basically a cyborg. And this is where we technically dive into the actual reason why Aldo Ferro had basically joined Weapon X. You see, like I said earlier, when it came to Aldo Ferro, we were left to believe originally that he only joined because he loved the idea of playing with people's minds. But actually, the real reason was Wolverine. The ability to slow down his aging was very intriguing to Aldo Ferro. And he was hoping to get a sample of the DNA of Wolverine to find a way to use that DNA to slow down his own aging process. But Weapon X did not hand over that piece of DNA that they were supposed to give Aldo Ferro. And because the man was on his deathbed, not on his deathbed, but like he was kind of growing old at a very fast pace. He said, you know what? The only way for me to stay alive is to begin to use cybernetics. And of course, that turned him into a cyborg. Now, I'm saying cyborg like a psychic, but cyborg. Because when it comes to Aldo Ferro, he still has his psychic abilities, but now he's also a cyborg as well. And so while you have Team X fighting against, well, Aldo Ferro, he is able to use his abilities to mess with their minds, to make them relive some of the worst moments of their lives. Now, we also learn that even though Aldo Ferro has the ability to play with people's minds, to plant different false memories into the minds of people, he actually needs a real memory to allow him to play with the person's mind. So, for example, the whole idea of Wolverine and Silver Fox being back in that cabin together, the only way he is able to play with that kind of setting in the mind of Wolverine is it has to be an actual past event. And so for Wolverine and Silver Fox, it did happen. But the only thing he was able to change in that moment in time or in the mind of Wolverine was the idea of Sabretooth 
killing off Silver Fox. It never happened because, hey, she's here in the present day or currently dead maybe at the moment, but right now she came back to life out of nowhere. And the reason why? Because she never died in the past. It was a trick. It was basically changed in the mind of Wolverine. That's the way all Dofero powers truly work, which means for the other members of Team X, the different worst moments of their lives that they're going through at this moment as he plays with their mind are just different events that actually played out differently, but he made them worse in their minds as a way to hurt them. Now, to make matters even worse, you didn't have Shiva appear. Now, Shiva, you would believe, is here for maybe a member of Team X, Wolverine, Sabretooth, Maverick, Wraith, or possibly Silver Fox. But no, Shiva is actually here for Aldo Faro. And so you have Jubilee say, yeah, if you're looking for him, he's down there with the others like Team X. And you had Shiva just go ahead and begin to head down there to hopefully find his target. Now the ending of this chapter is pretty wild and here is the reason why. So you have Aldo Farrell being able to simulate the actual cabin in the minds of Wolverine, Silver Fox, and also Sabretooth. Now as you just learned, she never did die with the hands of Sabretooth. The idea of what Wolverine remembers is not true at all, but it's about to become a reality because you didn't have Aldo being able to control the mind of Sabretooth to tell him, hey, I need you to go ahead and kill her off, except this time it's going to be real. And Wolverine, by the time he does get into the cabin, he's too late. Sabretooth has killed her for sure this time is a huge moment. Now, after doing that, you didn't have Shiva appear. Now, the ending of this chapter is where you have Shiva appear. Now, when Shiva does appear, it is able to crack open the actual cyborg armor suit that Aldo is wearing to reveal that, well, it's just an old man. Now, the old man is still controlling the mind of Sabretooth. And because of that, he tells Sabretooth, I need you to come over here to me. Which, of course, you have Victor walk over to Aldo. With Aldo's huge psychic abilities, he was able to create an illusion where a tree does appear. And his tree is able to absorb Sabretooth inside of it and then the tree begin to shrink down into just a seed and so all Dofero and Sabretooth were able to escape and of course Wolverine is no longer able to get revenge against the two people who just took away the woman he loved Silver Fox. And so as we dive into the final chapter for today's video, we actually do pick up with Wolverine fighting against Sabretooth in the Danger Room. Now really, this is Wolverine using the Danger Room as a way to create a fake image of Sabretooth so that Wolverine can get revenge against the person who had just caused him a lot of pain in a very recent amount of time. Because in the last chapter, Sabretooth had just killed off, well, Silver Fox. Now, you have Charles Xavier and other members of the X-Men watching Wolverine go through this Danger Room session. But for Charles Xavier, he does not understand why Wolverine would love the idea to put himself through something like this because honestly, it's only going to cause more pain for him to go through. But for the other members of the X-Men, they kind of understand why Wolverine is doing this for. Because right now, it's the only way for him to get over what just happened in the previous chapter as a way to kill the man who took away the woman that he had supposedly loved in the past. And so we see Wolverine fighting against Sabretooth. But while you have the Danger Room session going on, the session is able to tap into the mind of Wolverine. And when it does, it has the fake Sabretooth say something to remind Wolverine about a certain mission. 
a mission about a character known as Terry Adams. Now, we don't learn much about that actual person in this book, but it will become very important in later books down the road. But either way, you didn't have Charles go ahead and end the Danger Room session because he can't stand the idea of seeing Logan go through this kind of session to kind of help him get over his pain. Now, later on in the day, we do see Wolverine trying his best to keep his mind off the idea that he lost Silver Fox. And so you have Wolverine go to a nearby bar. Now, here's the thing. Wolverine is really great in pool. So when he does arrive at the bar, he is able to hustle people out of their money. One of the guys at the bar is not very happy about the idea of losing money to Wolverine. And matter of fact, he wants to beat down on Logan. But you have Logan say, how about this? If you are able to take me out in one single punch, I'll give all the money back to you. But if I'm able to take your punch and then give you a punch to knock you out, then I'm able to keep the money. And so you have both guys agree on this bet. The guy is able to punch Wolverine and he actually does a pretty good number on Logan. But as we all know, Logan has a healing factor. And so sooner or later, he's going to be okay. But on top of that, Wolverine's bones are laced in adamantium. adamantium. Oh my God, adamantium. I don't know why I had a hard time saying that. Either way, when it comes to Logan, he was able to take that punch because of those two different things. And so when it comes time for him to punch the guy back, luckily for the guy, Jean Grey walked into the bar and said, stop, Logan, I think you and I need to have a conversation. Now, Jean Grey being here is really important for a lot of different reasons. The main reason why, because as we all know, Wolverine had a huge crush on Jean Grey and really vice versa. She was also in love with the man as well. But here's the thing. Jean Grey had died back in the Dark Phoenix Saga, and kind of like Silver Fox, she came back to life out of nowhere. And for Wolverine, it's the whole idea of questioning his life because every single time he feels like he's able to move on from losing someone he loves so much, they come right back into his life. Jean Grey. Silver Fox. But at the same time though, Jean Grey is now technically the last woman that he loved who's still alive. Because when it comes to the last few videos we have done, this man had lost not one, but two lovers in a very short period of time. Silver Fox being the most recent one, but let's not forget, he also lost Mariko back in Japan as well. And he was supposed to marry her. And so for Wolverine, it's kind of like, listen, every single time I try to move on, a past lover of mine comes back. And when it seems like I'll be able to be with that past lover, they move on to somebody else or they're taken away from me by being killed off. But at the same time, though, for Wolverine, it's kind of like when it does seem like he might finally have love again, that person is taken away from him. And so this man really can't deal with the idea of just keep losing people he loves. Now, for Jean Grey, she wants to be there for Logan for the funeral for Silver Fox. But he says, no, this is a private matter. Now, when it comes time for the actual funeral, well, unfortunately for Wolverine, the body of Silver Fox was no longer there. And so for Wolverine, he's kind of wondering who in the world had her body removed. And then he finds out it was S.H.I.E.L.D. He finds out it was Nick Fury. And the reason why? Because Nick Fury and Wraith had arrived to tell Wolverine, by the way, we're going to give her a full-on shield funeral, but at the cabin that you and her has stayed at. And so for Logan, it's kind of a big deal because he still questioned the idea, was the cabin actually real? Even though he technically knows it was, it's kind of like you're still get, making sure that it is actually a real thing. And so for Wolverine, they say, yes, it is real. We found it and we feel like she should be buried there. But telling you right now, you have to be blindfolded as we go over there so that you won't be able to actually find the location. Which that part right there is kind of weird because like, 
what is the big secret behind it. Either way, they take him over there. Now, the ending of this book is really more of Wolverine coming over here to do the whole actual funeral, but by himself. He wants no one else around. But something else I should truly mention is the idea that there's going to be more secrets about the character of Silver Fox coming out down the road in later books that we are going to cover. So don't think that we know everything about the character up to this moment right here in our coverage over the X-Men. Later on, they're going to add more and more details about the actual character. But this is where we are going to end today's comic book video. So please, leave me a like down below and subscribe. But guys, see you next time, later.